Good evening and welcome to Chamonix. This is one of the most special nights every year on the IFSC calendar. 16 of the world's best climbers on the stage. Mont Blanc behind and 12,000 people filling the Place du Mont Blanc to cheer them on. We're live in Chamonix. Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here to talk you through it. And the first of our female climbers being presented to the crowd. Mike, before we talk about tonight's finalists, we have to mention the one woman who didn't make it. There's going to be a female World Cup winner this year that is not Yanni Garnbrett, Mr. Lead Final, for the first time in her IFSC career. Yeah, I mean, it turns out Yanni is human after all. It's possible for her to make a mistake. If you watch the semi final round, don't go back and watch it now if you haven't. Save that for later. But basically, you watch the replay. It's a little bit hard to know what happened to Yanya. A lot of talk around here in the arena. What went wrong? Some people saying she looked pumped. Some people saying her foot slipped. Some people even saying it was the altitude that made her fall off. Turns out yeah, it is possible for Yanya to make a mistake. So much pressure on her every single World Cup. 100% record going into this competition. In, uh, record transferring it into finals. Give her a break, I think. It's been amazing watching her up to this stage. I'm sure she'll be back to live to fight another day, no doubt. Of course, what that does mean is that the door is open for someone else. She's absolutely dominated the World Cups this year, won all the bouldering World Cups and the first lead World Cup of the season last week in Vila. But somebody is going to fill the void left by Yanya and claim a World Cup win. Yutong Jang, the uh, sixth of the female climbers to be introduced, just to let you know, already on the stage, Molly Thompson-Smith, Ashima Sherieshi, uh, Ai Mori, Lutz Karakovic, Jesse Piltz, and Yutong Jang being introduced now. She was second in Vila last week in her first ever World Cup. Che Yun Seo, the 15-year-old Korean sensation. Could she make it a second and a first in her first ever t World Cups? Second Japanese climber in this evening's final, Natsuki Tani. She got a 52 plus on what was a very hard women's semi final route, the highest ranked of all the climbers, and she will therefore climb last. The women will be out first this evening. It'll be women followed by the men. And that is the scene here in Chamonix. Crowd absolutely enormous, extending well past those trees, people stand, uh, sitting on shoulders leaning out of balconies, out of hotel rooms. What a fantastic location. And as, there you can see at Mont Blanc, not quite revealing her summit, a bit of cloud sitting over the top. I guess you can't have everything. And observation begins uh, for the climbers. Six minutes to observe the route uh, en masse. Mike, we had a look at this route earlier on. A couple of showy moves, but a, a bit like the semi-final, a lot of long, powerful, reachy moves. Yeah, interesting. First thing I'd say about the route is uh, just had a good chat with the route setters. They said they're really feeling the pressure after Villars last week. You know, the finals there uh, was a was a tricky one, and a few people left disappointed with that one for sure. So the pressure's on the guys here. They seem to have done a really good job so far this weekend. They've gone for a bit more of a traditional style, not too much show, but they have to get the balance right here. Just early on in the route, just as we get into the first third, there is a bit of a jump low down. You can see the big sort of ring donut above the logos there on the blue volume, big orange ring on there. So it's a bit of a bit of a show at the bottom of the route, so a bit of a piece just to keep this 8,000 or so strong crowd happy right at the bottom. Then a bit of a traditional climbing through into the red volume, and then it gets super punchy all the way through up into the head wall, at which point there could be a further jump to finish potentially. Yeah, the, the very aesthetic teardrop effect at the top of the two volumes, the one on the left is where the women will finish up. And yeah, a possible jump and a and, and couple of possible ways of doing it, we hear. Yeah, I like the fact that you call it a teardrop. There could be some tears up there tonight. <laughs> a bit of a yeah, a bit of a show to finish on, on the uh, on the routes here in the women's competition. 42 moves it is in the women's, so shorter than we've seen some of the routes here today. A bit punchy, so obviously six minutes is quite short. Uh, but the route set has gone for a traditional style of hard moves, big spans between the holes, traditional body tension, a bit of power endurance. And um, interestingly, he was saying that they feel like the overall endurance of the athletes at this stage in the lead season is a little bit down to what they would expect potentially because of the effect of the bouldering season and those who are competing in the combined. And more interestingly, the door is open, all these new athletes, these, these four athletes in the final, all born in 2003, 
It's uh, there's a lot of question marks for the root setters, and you have to feel for them. The pressure is really on tonight. Yeah, quite extraordinary, really. The uh, the ages, six of the eight climbers in the women's final were born in this century, uh, which is absolutely amazing. And Jessie Pills, born in 1996, only turns 23 this year, and she's the oldest climber in the final. Yeah, it's crazy. 22 is the oldest climber. It's, uh, yeah, the women's competition is very, very interesting this year. But we kept asking the question, where's the competition going to come for, for the likes of Yanya? Is it going to come from somebody who's already a, a well-renowned athlete, someone like Jesse Pills, who's obviously been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Yanya last year. She is the world champion in this discipline. But it looks like the real competition may come from those younger climbers coming out of youth B. Yeah, it's an interesting element. I mean, coming into the season, you can't help but think that the main competition for Yanya would have come from... from uh, Jesse, perhaps a couple of her compatriots, of course, uh, Luchka Rakovic, we can see there studying the route with uh, Jesse, has looked increasingly dangerous. But uh, it's been a few surprise packages coming through, and it looks like that's going to carry on. As I say, six climbers born in the 2000s uh, in this evening's women's final. Uh, over on the men's side, we haven't seen the men out yet. They will be presented to the crowd a bit later on, and then they'll have six minutes to observe. But very strong uh, final. Alex Megos will be first out. Martin Stranick, Sean McCall, Jakob Schubert, Will Bosi, Kai Harada, Alberto Hines, Lopez, and Adam Ondra, the top eight. Should be a fascinating men's final as well. If you're wondering why, uh, if you saw Alex Megos climbing and you're wondering why he's quite so low down the order, there was actually appeal uh, against Alex and he was slightly scored down, but it was still enough to keep him in the top eight. Actually, after the semi final, there was a lot of talk of appeals being made. In the end, not that many were made, and uh, none that were successful actually affected who our finalists are. But it was all a bit of a the confusion reigned after the semi final. Yeah, there was a lot of stress, and I think that was mostly based off the back of Yanya basically being one place out of finals it's not as if her team were trying to get her in that is obviously not how they play the game but there was a lot of different incidents which is, could have affected people's rankings going into the final as we know like last week if there's a ranking you, you've got to think about the ranking if there's a tie during finals semi-finals positions is very important Alex Magos was deemed to be using the bolt for his foot uh, that scored him right down into the order so he's gone down into eighth so maybe that will play a factor hopefully it won't come back to count back nobody wants to see that obviously but with these athletes they're so similar in their abilities um it's it's going to be a really tough one if it does come back to those count back and those teams they had to work so hard to get their cash out of their pocket to pay for these appeals if you don't understand what we're talking about go back and watch the semi-finals it's quite an interesting process and it was really interesting just staying after the semi-finals just to watch the different teams kind of jostling they've all got the rule book out they're kind of waving at each other it was uh, quite entertaining stuff yeah it was uh, it wasn't handbags at five paces <laughs> it was rule books at five paces uh, for a while uh, you can see there by the way Luzka Rakovic uh, left legs and quite heavy strapping on her heel I'm told she fell off uh, warming up landed very heavily on the heel and is actually struggling to walk uh, she, we actually saw her just jump off the stage so it can't be too bad but she's trying to take any impact on her right leg when she does jump off or walks around she's kind of walking almost on a tiptoe on the left leg so a bit of a heel injury uh, it doesn't seem to slow the Slovenians down too much Mia Krampel more or less only had one functioning leg and still got on the podium in Munich yeah, um, she, 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 something to keep an eye out for yeah if she was watching that she'll be inspired I think maybe that's not the way to look at it but yeah uh, I mean tip of the hat as well to Magdalena Rock obviously really bad arm injury that she received in qualification yesterday uh, it does seem to be quite a serious injury that she got, unfortunately. So best of luck with that for her and the Austrian team. Do wish them well. Yeah, we, we had a few people asking questions about that. Actually, Magda Rock uh, didn't, uh, hasn't had the best couple of years due to injury. She was back in action here in Chamonix and took quite a nasty fall, smacked the wall, and I believe she hyperextended her elbow. And she's done a bit of damage to a few ligaments and possibly uh, part of the elbow bone as well. So that doesn't sound too promising to Magda Rock. So shout out to her and hoping that... Uh, we will see another comeback from her, of course a World Cup winner, and we'd like to see her at the business end again. There is uh, the list of the eight women who have made it through, Molly Thompson-Smith, Ashima Sherashi, uh, Ai Mori, Luch Karakovic, Jesse Pils, Yutong Jang, Chehun Seo, and Natsuki Tani. Should be a fascinating final. Molly Thompson-Smith had an awfully long, uh, nervous wait to see if she was in. And, of course, when Yanya Garnbrecht came out, Molly can't help but have thought uh, she wasn't going to make it into the final. But Yanya could not do what was required. She was a plus away from the place in the final, ended up ninth. And uh, Molly is in. Actually, uh, 
Molly's first final appearance since her uh, third place in Cranj in 2017. Had a series of very bad finger injuries. Uh, looked like they could be terminal to her career at one stage, and she's done fantastically well to get back to this stage. Yeah, I think it's super inspiring, actually, for those guys out there who do get finger injuries from time to time. Pretty much every climber has probably had one. Uh, if you haven't, you're in the very lucky category. Uh, but it's inspiring to see Molly to get back on the top, top form. She struggled in the bouldering season a little bit, so to get back and be out here in front of this crowd, is uh, she's going to be absolutely buzzing. And that is the view that will be greeting the climbers. It is an absolutely spectacular sight. The peaks of the Aigui Rouge behind the crowd. Chamonix Town will gradually disappear into darkness as the evening goes by, and that is who is watching you. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, Mike, we ran into Will Boses, who was heading into isolation, and he was grinning from ear to ear at the prospect of climbing in front of this crowd. Yeah, Will's a, Will's a really, he's a great character in life in general, but he just couldn't, he was bouncing around on the spot. He was absolutely just so ecstatic to get out here and compete in front of this crowd again. He's one of those climbers who, he relishes the stage. He wants to come out there. He wants to do the Will Bosey thing. When he gets to a hold that's good enough, he'll turn to the crowd, pump his fist, and get that lot going and get them right behind him. Hopefully, he'll have that opportunity tonight because it's always a really great moment. Yes, there are the crowd being uh, egged on. Estimates vary of how many are in the um, in the Place du Mont Blanc. I've been told 12,000. I'll go with that. That sounds pretty good to me. There are the routes. Women will be on the left. Men will be on the right. So it's actually the reverse of the semi-final. The routes look quite similar. Uh, the women in the semi-final were on the right on those yellow and black volumes, and the men were on the left uh, in the blue and orange. It's reversed for the final. So women on the left, men on the right. There's the speed wall over to the left. Excellent speed final there. Uh, last night few false starts few incidents few double falls all sorts going on you can find that replay on the the ifsc youtube page peaks of chamonix visible behind where else would you rather be as the sun sets over the french alps we're in the french alps again next weekend as well we're heading down to briançon and in the meantime we've got the small matter of the paraclimbing world championships as well so a lot of climbing coming up for you uh, beyond this evening for the rest of this week that's where they're heading on the women's route it's a pretty good top hold, that orange one, but they'll have to get there first, and there's a really tricky move getting up to that left-hand teardrop volume. And as you say, Mike, could be a few tears shed uh, from climbers who nearly land it. be great to see a top. We didn't see any in the semi-finals, uh, but I think generally hard to complain when you have such good separation, such entertaining routes as we had in the semi-finals, and we're hoping for the same again. Yeah, perfect separation going into the final is very different, again, like to what we had last week. So... Yeah, the, the pressure is, is definitely there, though, for the root setters. And this is always this really interesting debate in the community about do we want to put on a show and get a top or multiple tops? So the crowd here, they love to see tops. Everyone goes wild when everyone gets a top. But ultimately, we want to see the climbers tested, and that's what we really want tonight. And the, uh, the root setters have got a tricky job because they've got a couple of names in there they're not too familiar with. These guys, 2003... Uh, year of birth coming up through the junior ranks they they may not have seen them that much and uh, to put on a show plus to challenge them as a slightly unknown quantity is going to be going to be really interesting tonight also very easy to underestimate what an effect it has when you haven't seen the climbers so much i mean it, before last weekend in vila the last week lead world cup was in october so whilst you've seen the climbers bouldering, you've basically got no idea what the current lead level is like, particularly because we've got lots of climbers. I'm thinking of uh, Jakob Schubert, Stefano Gisolfi, Alex Megos, Adam Andre, the traditionally big names who would expect to see doing well in lead climbing. They're now training all three disciplines, so it's even hard to gauge their level. Yeah, the only thing the route setters have really got to go on is the previous rounds. They have to guess the qualifiers to their best professional guess. <laughs> Uh, base they can base it a little bit off the feedback from the root setters in Villars last week, but ultimately they've got to see what the results are like in qualifying, see what the results are like in semi-final, and then compare that to the difficulty that they believe the route is for the final. That's something that they set days and days ago at the start of the week, so they're just going back to how they felt then. It's this constant balance is so difficult to judge from the root setters. Here comes Molly Thompson-Smith, been on a World Cup podium, never been on top of one. What can she do here in Chamonix? Uh, quick smile as she came out but otherwise doesn't really acknowledge the crowd just wants to get straight on with things uh, almost a kind of bolder problem start for the women they've got a mantle onto that blue box doesn't actually look uh, too tricky but it's like an unusual start to a lead route and she's underway yeah interesting choice from the dj there as well it's a bit of a howler to start but off he off molly thompson goes nice and calm 
Uh, so Mike, this, this lower section, we're not expecting too many surprises lower down. It's just a case of uh, ideally taking a bit of energy out of the climbers. Exactly, yeah, just start to uh, test the climbers' resistance a little bit with quite a few side pulls. You know, it's by no stretch of imagination is this an easy selection of moves at the bottom here. It's absolutely brutal. Obviously, this is a World Cup final, but it does just lead you up nicely for a few little crossovers. Edges really kind of crimps and bad feet that we've seen pretty much all the way through this competition. A lot of blocked holds. And already uh, Molly with a slightly awkward looking move there had to just uh, shuffle her feet around and she was pretty much at full stretch to go up for that left hand. Root setters here in Chamonix have enjoyed this kind of uh, cross through underneath. We've seen that quite a few times and there's a few more moves like that in the final. Yeah, it's a great way of just adding in an extra move in the same kind of area on the wall. Without pushing uh, too high up, you can kind of get a couple more moves in the bank for the climbers. 42 moves it is in this women's competition as Molly slowly starts to work her way up into the steeper section around 40 degrees. That next overhanging section, the real meat of this wall, is really edging and crimping. A couple of new holds here as well, which is really good for the uh, climbers to be tested against. A bit of a big move coming up for Molly into this kind of big pinchy jug. She got that first long quick draw clip. We saw a lot of people struggling with them in the semi-final. Uh, Molly done well so far. You can see it, the big change in angle and the feet cut loose. That just makes things even more physical. That's a pretty poor hold and she's making it look pretty good. Molly thompson Slith looking strong here, but the pump will kick in quickly. She's on the very steepest section of the wall. About half of the length of the wall is this very, very steep section. And Molly wants to be up it and off it as quickly as possible, if at all possible. Uh, now, a bit of a jump here. No problem at all for Molly. Nice show for the crowd, but she didn't look as if she found it too tough. Probably imagine Molly might take a quick chalk and shake here push before pushing on. She had to fight a little bit at the bottom of the wall there. Actually, just struggled on the left foot slightly lower down. There's a potential, just looking at it, that she might have touched the bolt with the right foot. Don't want to speculate too early because there's been quite a lot of those issues already in the uh, Chamonix semi-final. Can't see anybody running around looking at that at the moment. So hopefully that's not an issue for Molly. And we want to really see her tested through this next section. So more dynamic moves through here for Molly. Still looking pretty calm and relaxed. She's not taken any really long breaks. Took a pretty big pause. Suddenly she looks as if she's having to work really hard. And you can see just why. Pretty much locked off on one arm. Had to be accurate there when she landed the right hand. That was awesome from Molly, the big campus through, one arm lock off, just sacked the power out of her though, really good, really good climb from Molly Thompson Smith, I think she's actually gonna go away from this competition, pretty happy with that, she managed to put in a fight, there was no silly slips. Looked a very smooth, uh, very smooth attempt. Uh, earlier on had that slightly long reach, it sli looked slightly awkward as she got the heel hook in place. Otherwise, pretty smooth, no glaring errors, no issues at all. Uh, I suspect, as you say, Mike, she'll be pretty happy with that. And as we saw with a lot of climbers in the semi-final, seemed to go from pretty calm to pretty cum, pretty pumped, pretty quickly. Yeah, that, the easy for me to say. The way that the root set has used that bit of all. Let's have another look. That is a road hold 26. Uses the thumb in the bolt hole, fires up, but that stage of the route, really punchy section of quite bad side ball pinches. Have another look. Yeah, I think that'll be a 20, uh, 26 plus for Molly Thompson Smith. That's your first climber out, got quite high on the wall. 20. Yeah, 26 plus. Yeah, 26 plus of 42. Uh, yeah, top is 42. Remember, you've got to clip the top quick draw for it to be a top. You don't just get to the top wall, you've got to clip at the top quick draw. And you can't just turn and fist pump to the crowd and then bin it, take a big <laughs> fall. You've got to clip that draw. Take the glory whipper off the top. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good uh, good show to begin with, I would say. The little move out to the sort of big donut jug on the left turned out to be not so tricky. The Russo did say they had a few adjustments that they uh, slid that volume a little bit closer to the right hand Gaston just to ease down the difficulty a little bit. Let's hope they're not easing it down too much, though. Here comes Ashima. Never won a World Cup second last year in Shiamen in 2018. That was the last time a uh, Boulder or Lead World Cup was not won by uh, Jan Yagambre. It was Jesse Pilt who won there and Ashima was second. Can she claim the World Cup win that people have been predicting she could for so long? She's got a very big opportunity tonight. Uh, Mike, just thinking quickly about that Molly Thompson-Smith attempt. Uh, I think 
one thing that looked quite promising. The move she fell off didn't look like a stopper move. It didn't look like a move that's going to see people drop repeatedly. I, I think that section is is where the route really starts to kick in. It's kind of like a nice resistance, bit of showy to begin, about to about halfway, then you get almost a, a boulder problem start to the hard stuff. A uh, bit of a pounce up to some side pulls, and that on the, on that sort of terrain going up to side pulls, you you have to be in a lot of control. You can't sort of flick up to a uh, hold like that. We saw that with Stefano Gasolfi in the semi-final. Just jumped to a side pull and uh, completely fluffed it. Yeah, Stefano Gasolfi. Um, I'm sorry to give him a hard time, but a big, big mistake in the semi-final. Ended up 26th there in the venue where he won last year, so he will not be in the final. Uh, here's Ashima. Six minutes to climb the route, of which she's used 45. Uh, she's on the second panel, so the wall here in Chamonix divided into four panels. Uh, the least steep being the top and the bottom and then she's on the uh, the middle steep section and then she gets onto the very very steep section which is right through the middle of course there's also the huge red feature right in the middle of the wall that gives the root setters a little bit more to play with than just four flat panels and uh, both men's and women's roots go on to that big red feature and it's enabled them just to be a little more creative just checks the time Ashima Climbing uh, out of New York City doesn't breed that many top climbers. Well, but, uh, Molly, Molly straight out of London as well. Yeah, so I know. Uh, it's uh, that, that's the effect of the climbing gyms right there. Inner city kids in World Cup finals. It's great to see uh, such diversity. So she's got what proved to be on the uh, men's semi-final, a somewhat awkward quick draw to clip. Yeah, this section here is just where Molly started to struggle a little bit on the feet. Seems to be a really bad left foothold on the side of that right volume. That's the left foot I'm talking about. Uh, nicely done from Mishima though, puts the power through that foot without too many issues. She's actually climbing quite slowly up to this point. Quick draw, just tucked behind her shoulder now, so just got to get that sorted and then have a look at this little jump to the donut. Yeah, the next move is the jump to the donut, and I think quite sensibly gets a clip done. Uh, look for a second like she might just fiddle that clip, but got it done. Take a break before the jump, and if she can pull the jump off, she'll have something resembling a rest on it. I think the uh, speed of her climbing will then pick up after that. I was just going to say it would be quite interesting to see if she swaps hands there to rest, because she was taking a rest, but it was all on the right arm. There was nothing for her left hand. It does just shuffle across and matches there. Yeah, it's quite interesting as well. Obviously, slightly nervous about this jump, Bashima, because there is a good rest at the end of the jump, but obviously you've got to execute it before you get that rest, and she's uh, clearly wants to do the jump fresh. I think this is what we're going to start to see, that the uh, root setters really have brought that volume and the hold associated with it really much closer to that right-hand side. But Bashima, in the end, she may have read it as a jump, like a lot of people here did from the ground, but ultimately, it just looks like the uh, really strong athletes can just lock that off. Yeah, it looked like one of those moves where she was quite pleased when she got there. It was nearly not nearly as far as it might have looked. Interesting that Ashima used that left hand where her left foot now is rather than the one closer to her to bump out right where her right hand now is. She's climbing really intelligently here, Ashima. She's rested loads. She's been in, around in this sort of two, three metres of wall for the best part of two minutes. This is the territory we can't start to rest though, it's a real show of power and Ashima has bags of it, look at that left arm lock off strength, really nice looking move. It's moves like that where you get an insight into the difference between us and World Cup climbers. Speak for yourself. <laughs> this is the move then, uh, getting close to the high point of Molly Thompson-Smith. So Ashima slaps out right, so that's the, that was the move where we lost Molly. Uh, pops up right again. She's on that huge red uh, feature that's so familiar if you watch our coverage every year from Chamonix. She's not too far off the angle change, actually. Another half a dozen moves or so. Yeah, hold 28 and 29 that she's matched it already. So she'll head out. When she goes left, that's hold 30. There's only 42 on the route, so with 145 left, I think she's got her pace pretty good, actually. Yeah, we're, we're seeing with this route straight away there seems to be a, a number of places to rest. Ashima's almost rested her way up to this point. She's been able to rest almost uh, every move or every, every second move. This is a, a tough move here, though. And there's another one coming up right now as well. Ideally, we'd like to get the clip done sooner rather than later. Bumps up again, Ashima Shirashi going really well here. Up to the volcano, still looking strong. Really needs to get that clip done now. 
quick draw was swinging from where she banged against it and uh, it's a two for one manages to get two clips done and is she about to make it onto the head wall? She'll be the first climber, obviously, to get that far. Holds 33 and 34, Beckham. Quick check over the shoulder. Time is going to be an issue potentially here for Ashima. 50 seconds left. Top section could be quite slow to climb, but she knows it now. She's really picking up the pace all of a sudden. Big grimace. A good fight for Ashima. Good show. Fantastic stuff. That'll be a 34 plus for Ashima to Molly Thompson Smith, 26 plus. Uh, first impressions very positive on this route. Yeah, positive. Early climbers out. I mean, this women's field is so close. It's really hard to tell by one person's performance how the difficult, how difficult the route is going to be. But at the moment, I'd say we're going to see a lot of climbers high up on the wall. Uh, Shima looked very composed there. I have to say, she was climbing it so intelligently. Uh, took a lot of rests, took every rest going, created a few that I don't think the route setters expected to see. Yeah, there is a number of quite good big holds on this route. You can see through that big sort of campus row section down below, really big buckets really, and then another one there. Also, it's a big move to it, so it takes a lot of power, but luckily this head wall seems to have a bit of spice to it. So you see, she actually went a little beyond that crimp. I think you're going to have to be super accurate on there as you uh, come over the angle change you've got to keep your hips in and if you miss it at all and your body shifts pretty hard to imagine staying on the wall there yeah the root setters have employed a lot of blockers on these holes so little screws tucked into some of the better holes just to kind of get take away the good bits take away some of the heel hooks for these uh, these females they're just so good on the heels and a lot of time the root set especially in the semi-final blocking loads of sections of the hole just to try and increase the accuracy and take away some of the footholds here's i mori two podiums for her already last week in vila and in the bouldering in uh, wujiang back in may so an excellent season already and she's underway on the women's route seen two uh, good attempts the shima shirashi looking particularly strong and it has the current high point at 34 plus. You can see there 5.35 left. Climber's got six minutes to attempt the route. A lot of the time in these modern routes, we see route setters employing moves with high risk, basically jumps and tricky, tricky little sections. Bigger moves, maybe one, two catches, things like that. And sometimes they substitute endurance for risk. And if you make changes to the route, you take away the level of risk because the athletes aren't quite as good as you thought, or you get a bit nervous about how hard the route, the, the move is with the risk, you end up with no risk and no endurance. And that is the problem that faces the route setters all the time. The balance between risk and endurance. With semi-finals, it was pretty much no risk, all endurance. If you made a mistake, you were punished, and you were very like unlikely to fall off because of some strange move. This route seems to have a balance of both, but let's see if they've got the balance right between risk and endurance. Yeah, I, as ever, spare a thought for the route setters. I was chatting to uh, Flo Mornig, uh, our chief route setter here in Chamonix. Uh, I think the climbers were nervous, but surely there's nobody in the Chamonix Valley more nervous than Flo right now. All they can do is watch as their creation their best guess, all those micro calculations get put to the test in front of all you guys watching at home and 12,000 climbing fans in the uh, Place de Mont Blanc. It must be a very nerve wracking. I think I get nervous before the live streams. Imagine the route setters. But the uh, first impression's good, but as you say, Mike, the field is, is so unpredictable. And, uh, and also interesting that the route setters didn't think the uh, endurance level of the climbers was quite as high as they'd been expecting coming into the season, possibly of a symptom of climbers doing a lot more bouldering than they used to. This is interesting, that's the same left-hand sequence that Ashima used. So it just drops in, she will just drop into the middle triangle before toe-hooking that one. You can see really well there with a lot of chalk on it. Sure, in theory, get a left toe up. Oh, in interesting, goes for the toe on the closer volume. And this is the uh, really interesting showy section then. Let's see how I gets on with this one. Has she got the lock-off power? Doesn't look completely comfortable with just going footless, trying to wiggle some sort of toe into the donut oh, and goes dynamically in the end. Looked like she was in a little bit of trouble, but really a calculated method. Interestingly, she hasn't got that lower clip from where she was lower down. It's going to be really hard to get the clip from those two terrible pinches. Aymara could be in a bit of trouble here. 
Shows that strength on the right-hand side, though. Really nicely done. Great recovery. Yeah, it did really well. But, I mean, bear in mind, that's the hole that Molly Thompson-Smith fell on, and I Mori's made a clip from it, so impressive strength. I agree, Mike. I thought she was in a spot of, spot of bother, to use a very English phrase. Manages to get this manufactured rest off the toe hook and a big right foot down in that donut. Big cut loose using the left-hand side of that volume. There's not actually anything on that, just the uh, feature itself. And she gets the uh, clip done a lot earlier. We saw Ashima carry on right up to that volcano. I'm already got it done already. Up to the volcano. That was the first move where she looked like she was really struggling. Thinking about a clever little half drop knee there. Now, could she be about to reach and possibly surpass the high point of Ashimi? She's really grimacing. I think the pump really kicking in, and that is not an easy way to make a clip, but she does well. Yeah, brutal. Bent, bent arm clip there. She's really fighting. This is the next move then. This is where we lost Ashima. Uh, Aimori lining it up, pops up with the left hand, and it's the same move that stopped Ashima. So, as in the semi final, getting onto the head wall. It's proved beyond everyone so far, but that was a superb effort from Aimori. And uh, as we've seen with most of the climbers, it seems for this weekend, possibly as, as a, a symptom of endurance not being where it might be at this stage of the season, going from zero pump to 100% very, very quickly. Yeah, let's have another look. This is kind of quite a showy little jump move out to this nice ring at the quite high up on the wall. Really big power scream there from I. And it's, it's quite an interesting route, actually. It kind of, there's no one particular move that seems to be causing a lot of issues, unless it's this move that does cause those issues later on in the competition. But it just seems to be slowly starts building up a bit of a hard move, bit of a rest, bit of a hard move, bit of a rest, until you get right up into that head wall. But that head wall was very, very close to the top. That does look a hard move all of a sudden. Yeah, you've got no right foot there. It's just all off a really high left foot. So steep, you're going through the angle change there. Everything wants to throw your body backwards. You've got to go around the angle and around the volume to get to what is a pretty bad edge on the side of that uh, blue volume higher up. So here is Lutz Karakovic, we uh, mentioned earlier, carrying a bit of a heel injury, hence the large amounts of tape. It takes more than that to slow down Slovenian climbers, though. She will be uh, very grateful not to have to do any heel hooks. I'm just thinking through if we see many left heel yeah, hooks. There's a, there's a, a big, couple, left, aren't there? big left toe hook after you go through the kind of campus Hollywood section. Got to come, well, come up with better names for these moves. <laughs> But the community need to agree on some <laughs> some names here. Rusets do love a Hollywood section, though. <laughs> it basically means spin around, show off your biceps, show these uh, masses here what you're made of. <laughs> yeah, you can see the the blue tape there for Luchka. Quite a lot of these female athletes. It's a pinch there for the right hand with a clear thumb catch, but they're opting for the big crimp over the back rather than the pinch, which obviously shows that the crimp is deep enough not to actually need to pinch it, not to use the thumb. If the hole was pretty bad, you'd end up pinching it, but it's obviously good enough just to uh, get the crimp on. In the spotlights, really, uh, light begin to fade here in Chamonix. Conditions couldn't really be any better. I would guess it's around 10 degrees, slight breath of wind, bit of cloud in the sky. It's, uh, it couldn't really be any better. No excuses on the conditions front. It'll be interesting to see how she goes off that le left leg. She just seemed to be hanging it off the wall slightly there, slightly awkwardly. You can clearly feel it. So let's see this next move. This is where Molly didn't really like to use that left foot. Uh, Ashima did, and Luchka has no issues with it. Yeah, I just noticed actually uh, that left leg was quivering slightly when she had it uh, stuck out to the right. I really hope it isn't going to cause her any problems. As I say, it takes more than that generally to slow down Slovenian climbers. This clip slowing her down slightly. Yeah, it's a really baggy quick draw. It's always hard to pull up through a quick draw that's so long. Just the rope slightly around her left, uh, right leg as well. 
And a bit like Ashima choosing to rest before this move, which we've been calling the jump, it hasn't really turned out to be a jump. But no, it's been a it's been a minor push at best, I think. Yeah, it hasn't even looked a particularly significant move. But as you say, Mark, I'm pretty sure that during observation, the climbers have read it as being a little trickier and more committing than it's actually turned out to be. And there's the answer to whether the heel's really causing too many problems. I think we can forget that now. You see the couple of methods through here as well. A really nice section of climbing through this next bit. Climbers not tested massively by it, but it's interesting to see what methods they do, whether they prefer canvassing or they like to try and squeeze a few toes into these donuts. There does come a point now where you've got to commit as you go out right, and then all three climbers so far have uh, turned to face a crowd. Yeah, it's a big move actually, surprisingly far kind of behind you. By the time you've crossed it, you're almost right back behind you. And at this point, you've got to start committing to something. Looks like she's going to try and go completely statically. Oh, nice drag on the underside of the volume just to slow down the rotation. So that was kind of the least showy way we've seen of doing it. I have to say, it looked slightly in the balance for a second as she slapped then, but it worked out. Yeah, she's really struggling to stand on this foothold at the moment. She's sapping loads of power. She's locked off on both arms. Ah, oh, really interesting. We lose Luchka around uh, hole 24, 25, somewhere around there. You can see it just keen to land on the right leg. Yeah, she just stalled out all of a sudden. There was really steady away up to that. And then went very statically through that kind of campus -y section. And you wonder if that just took a little bit of power out of the tank. And then when all of a sudden you're back onto this really steep wall, a bad foothold, body tension's gone because you've used it all up in the previous move. Is it sometimes better just to say, yeah, okay, root setters, I'll play the game, I'll do it the showy way and just get through it rather than trying to static it like that? I think some athletes will just try and static anything. They, they will do absolutely everything they can not to, not to canvas. Uh, whereas other athletes, they, they just prefer just to try and flow through, but they've obviously got that confidence in their own body. They know their lock off power. They, they they know they can hold a hold an edge or a, or a bar for a certain number of seconds, so they can look at that and go, "Yeah, I can I'm quite easily just swing around on one arm on that." But others, someone like Natsuki Tani coming out last, she, you know, I'll be very surprised if she starts trying to jump around the wall and canvassing out. She'll do anything she can to go statically. There's the scores as it stands. Everyone, uh, everyone got a plus. You can tell everyone uh, just about failing on a move rather than. Uh, dropping off any particular spot. It's Aimori who leads away right now, though, ahead of Ashima Sherry, Shira Eshi, and uh, Molly Thompson-Smith in third with Luchka Rakovic in fourth. Jesse Piltz, Yutong Jang, Chehyun Seo, and Natsuki Tani still to come. Jesse Piltz, of course, the next climber out, one here in Chamonix last year. Uh, some sort of laser pen being used on one of the holes here. Is that by the local experts, or is that someone in a balcony across the way? We've got uh, Francois Legrand, uh, on the uh, helping our MC Christopher. Definitely a man who knows a thing or two about competition climbing, is our uh, in house expert. And we await the arrival of Jesse Piltz. Just trying to figure out what the laser pen on the wall is. Never actually seen that before. That seems to be completely clear as to what's going on. I think that could well be Francois Legrand pointing things out to the crowd. If Francois Legrand's got some advice to give about climbing, I am all ears, that's for sure. Yeah, I'll be listening. <laughs> hope he does it in English. <laughs> yeah, did you get your autograph book out earlier, like when you saw Yuji? <laughs> Autograph books always out. So many legends walking around this town, it's unbelievable. I'm not quite sure uh, why we're being made to wait for Jesse Peltz or why the crowd are being made to wait. I don't see a uh, technical incident. I don't see IFSC officials running around like headless chickens, which is a good sign. Yeah, they're, they're still just about cooling down after the end of the semi final with all the technicals. <laughs> Yeah, they were made to work after that semi-final. There is, of course, an element of judging. That's why we have judges in league climbing. Was it a plus? Did they did they touch a bolt or did they use it? Um, yeah, I mean, to, that, I mean that, we've seen that a couple of times already this season. This idea of you stood on the bolt, but did you use it? I mean, how do you tell? Like, did you did you see the calf muscle flex as they stood on it? Like, it's a really tough call. And uh, yeah, the technical delegates, to be fair, have done a really good job here dealing with that after.
after March at the semi-final. They have to, and I, and I think all the teams ask, and what I think the teams get is consistency. Uh, that's all you can ask. There is an, always an element of judging and taking a look at it, but as long as they're consistent, it's pretty hard to complain. Here comes Jesse Pilt, the world champion lead from 2018 in Innsbruck, the reigning champion from Chamonix 2018. A year on, here she is. Did not have a good weekend in Vilar. She looked, uh, she looked okay in the qualifiers and, and good in the semi-finals. She definitely doesn't look the Jesse Pilts at the end of last season. Yeah, we had a bit of a chat with her last week and saying that, uh, like you say, she's world champion mm -hmm. from last season. Just uh, struggling with the, maybe, I wouldn't like to say struggling, that's a little bit unfair. She she, feel, she feels the pressure of being world champion. I think that's the best way of putting it. Uh, there's this weight on her shoulders that, that's new and she has to deal with it. Uh, but seemingly she's dealing with it quite well because she's here in the finals, struggled a little bit last week, and but she's back in the game and climbed well in semis. Yeah, climbing is equivalent of a first world problem to, you know, struggle with being world champion. Um, but yeah, I think there's an element of that. Of course, Jesse, before we saw her training almost exclusively for lead climbing, suddenly she's training for boulders, she's training for speed. That, that could well have an effect as well. But she is very much in the running here to win in Chamonix. And this could be the place where she really gets her lead season underway. Well, actually, last week I, I asked her about the competition that was really kind of really strong between her and Yanya last year. Those two kind of going head to head at World Championships, coming back to time. A couple of times it came back to time between them because they both topped. And I said, how do you feel going going head to head with Yanya like that? And uh, you know, she, she admitted Yanya is amazing and Yanya's not here in the final. So the door is well and truly open here for Jesse. If there's an uh, opportunity to win in 2019 lead season, this is maybe as good as it gets. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think as well, for a lot of neutrals watching on, they would love to uh, see Jesse really running Yanya close week in, week out. And she had a bit of a false start to her lead season last week in Vilar. And this is such a huge opportunity in Chamonix. Got to get that quite dynamic yeah. move done. Didn't look entirely convinced about it, but actually yeah. did it with ease. End up jumping off a left toe hook rather than bringing that left foot high onto that right hand blue triangle, rather than using that toe. Just flick from quite low. She's obviously feeling confident. She's got the power. Like I said, a staggering bouldering season for her. Yeah, I think probably exceeded even her expectations uh, just how well she went in the bowling. Same true of Julia Shanody, who uh, sadly didn't quite make the final. No French climbers in the final in their home World Cup. Romain de Grange couldn't find a way either over on the men's side. But we do have Jesse Pills. Interesting to see the climbers on that little volume undercut section for the left. Just trying to figure out what is the best method there. They seem to be preferring this far left crimp. It's obviously better than the one in between. We thought it might be the other way around. Let's go into the Hollywood Hollywood Bowl section. Oh, nice from Jesse. Quick campus, no issues. Quick rotation. She's feeling super strong. Also doesn't get the clip there either, for, as uh, we saw from I Mori. So let's see what Jesse makes of this next section. Mori ended up getting it off this right hand, off that toe hook. But Jesse's going for the same technique. Uh, I think as well, po probably a sign of confidence, just how quickly Jesse was through that Hollywood section. Didn't try and turn it into something static or more secure, just went for it full on and was straight through. It was rewarded for her boldness. Taking a bit of a rest. We saw Ashima climbing really cleverly through here, resting every move almost. Yeah, a lot of tension required to rest in that position. And Jessie's can't actually see it from that shot. Now you can, but she actually managed to rest off a left heel rather than the left toe. Now gets double heels. Jessie's looking pretty fresh up to this point. I have to say, I've just looked out across the crowd. You realise just what an occasion this is to be climbing in the spotlight in front of the Place du Mont Blanc. It is absolutely packed. Hotel balconies going at about a thousand quid a night, I'd imagine, this weekend. Fantastic view of the wall, and they're watching the lead world champion in action. Jesse Pills just struggling a little bit here with the power on the right arm, just starting to, elbow started to raise a little bit there, so the crowd really started to get behind her a little bit. They can see that she's potentially, pump was building in the right hand, and if the pump's building in the right hand, that next move up on those blue volumes, she might start to struggle on. This is a, a tough move up now with the right hand. You've got to go with conviction, and again with the left. Get yourself established. And then, are we about to see this move executed for the first time? Jesse goes for it. Oh, that's the hold and couldn't quite hang on to it. Went to correct. Will the judges award her that hold? Probably not, to be honest. It was the double tap up there. 
hit it once, tried to hit it again, hit it, but just didn't hit it with enough conviction. You can see her looking at her skin a little bit. Really, really unlucky. Just a little bit low on the right hand. Just said just before, maybe she's suffering a bit of pump on the right arm. It's going to hurt her on that move. That seemed to be a little bit of a stopper move up there at the moment, around 34 plus. That was a good insight as to what's possible. So this is where you can see the right arm just starting to bend up a little bit. It hit that and started to relax again before this next section. So here it is uh, from Jessie. She looked really solid on it and then almost seemed to correct. There she was solid. Oh, oh she's going to be really, really regretting that adjustment, actually. She actually basically let go of the hold to try and, try and get it good and couldn't regain it. And what she won't realize is that, yes, whilst her uh, countback's very nice, she would have taken the clean lead. She would have been the first person to get 35. I wonder if the, I don't think the judges will give it to her. We'll see. We will see. But uh, I feel slightly sorry for the root setters on that one because it looks like they've set a stopper move. And, and really, I don't think it is. I think if Jesse had not corrected there, she could have carried on. Yeah, this is the thing when the, the climbers are all such a similar level. She's been awarded it, by the way. That's a 35 for Jessie Pill. So interesting, yeah. They obviously deemed that she controlled it enough to... Well, she did stop. Yeah. Um, she stopped and adjusted, so she also yeah. waited it. Actually, watching that replay, it looked more like she stopped than when we saw it in real time. Yeah, was that because it was in slow motion? Well, there is an element <laughs> of that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, should have seen that one coming. <laughs> Yu Tong Zhang now. Boulder semi-finals three times already this year. This is her first lead final. They've already picked up a gold medal here in Chamonix, have Team China. Uh, Yi Ling Song, very emotional with her speed climbing win last night. What can Zhang do? Two climbers still to come after her so should she be able to match uh, or beat Jesse Peltz's high point she'd already have guaranteed herself a place on the podium let's not get ahead of ourselves though second climber out in the 2003 year of birth category and just to come out in front of this many people amazing at such a young age they really seem to have this ability already at, at that age just to focus on the, the brute in front of them rather than the occasion. There you can see, oh my word, the That's crowd extending. It's going sideways. <laughs> All the way back to the Panier Bakery. That's amazing. That's, that's side on, not even facing the wall. Jesse Peltz walks past us, tried to catch her eye. Didn't look interested, certainly looked pumped. She gave that one everything. Yeah, Jesse just walked past our commentary position. Of course, she is currently in the lead at 35. I think uh, I think she'll probably keep hold of that if there's an appeal. That was, she was just about in control of the hold. So uh, Jesse Peltz with 35, the first to really land that move. Albeit that she went, and went to adjust and dropped it. So, will Jang take a, a long rest here, as we've seen quite a few climbers do? Or will she just get, get straight on up to that volcano hold? It hasn't proved to be the jump we thought it would be. Every athlete tending to do that off the left hill. Move up to the uh, first donut. She's shaking out quite a bit here, Jang. Is that precautionary or is that uh, because the pump has begun to kick in? Yeah, it does actually have to be seem, seemingly trying a fair bit here. Got herself in quite an awkward position there. The, the foot up high requires very flexible hamstrings. Didn't like the look of it after all. Looks like she's going to try and do this. I thought she was about to try and do it statically. Kind of paused on the left hand. Yeah, quickly tapped him with the right hand on that middle donut and just uh, looked a little bit short all of a sudden. Uh, in terms of power on going up to that third ring. Managed to get it back together, and this is where we've seen the athletes really kind of regain a bit of composure before this top head wall. She'll have another home World Cup again this year. We'll be back in Xiamen, third weekend of October, back in China for our second time this year. 
There's a little screw on jib on the top of that right hand hole just as her feet go. There's that foothold for later rather than the thumb catch for now. Yeah, the feet have cut loose quite a few times actually, Jiang. Is that a lack of tension or is that fatigue kicking in? You can see she's really having to fight now. Legs beginning to shake a little bit. How long can she keep going? Gets the jump all right. Uh, she's in a pretty decent position to clip. Problem is, if that left hand is really pumped, you don't really want to take the right hand off to get the clip done. She'll have to do it at some stage, though. And went for the heel hook, and again, the feet cut loose. This is a really impressive fight from Yutong Jang. The feet have cut loose repeatedly, and she seems to keep finding a way to stay on the wall. Oh, no, Manages to get the clip done. Yeah, it's her right foot above her hand, this is the move. And it was the left foot that slipped that time. Yeah, she was off <laughs> multiple times before that. She actually had the, hopefully we get to see again, an incredible save where I think she was going for the clip, fumbled it, and then ended up catching the left hand of one move ahead. Big, big fight, but another climber falls on the same move, 34 plus. It's been interesting, that 34 plus. Uh, everyone's fallen slightly differently. Uh, climbers going just past the hold. Uh, Ashima was just went past it. Uh, Aimori was just short of it. Uh, Jesse Pilts got there and then corrected. We've seen uh, Jang now with a foot slipped. Let's have another look. This was lower down. We had a lot of feet cutting loose. Did so well to hang on there. Yeah, she, I think she uh, used a lot of power. This is slightly further up then. Again, really bad feet. There is that little screw on, on the right-hand side that she used for her right foot just to bounce up to that top ring. And this moment here, that mad high heel hook kind of saved her for that clip. And punching for this, it was a left foot that actually slipped out of the hole yes. as well. Didn't, I don't know if she even actually got a hand on 35. No, I think that, that move, if you watch the climbers when they go for it, is it's all on the left leg and it's around the angle change. And like I said before, it's really awkward to get your kind of body around the angle change and pull in and up at the same time. And the left leg kind of has to go to the side of the volume, otherwise your knee will obviously just bang straight into it and push you off as well. So there's a lot of lock-off power and a kind of bit of a, a nice mix between lock-off and timing and accuracy all, in, all in, rolled into one there. Che Yun Seo of Korea will be the next climber out. She's been, only been in one World Cup before and she came second to Yanya Garnbrett. Yanya Garnbrett's not in the final here in Chamonix. What can she do here? Six minutes will begin again for her. She has 40 seconds uh, individual observation time. Just to look at the route once again, if you are just tuning in, the climbers have had six minutes joint observation where they all look at the route together earlier on. Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here. We're live in Chamonix. The sun is setting on Mont Blanc. There are 12,000 people looking on. What a fabulous show. And Che Yun Seo, the sensation from last week in Vilar, is about to get on the wall here in Chamonix. She's underway. Only two climbers left to attempt that move that uh, Jesse on the scoreboard stuck but couldn't really move off from. It would be great if we could see a top. Yeah, two climbers left, Jesse Pills already on the podium. We're just watching this lower section, Mike, you've done a huge amount of route setting in your time. Um, this lower section seems to be doing its job, it must be tough for route setters, you, you don't want to make it just a path. I guess you're just trying to get the climbers a little bit tired before the real meat of the route. Well, I think setting at this level, it's all about just knocking off some resistance in the forearms. Yeah. The, um, yeah, the French route setters in particular, uh, they use some good terminology for it, just a little bit of separation. They like to see separation here, separation there. Um, but ultimately, this bottom section hasn't caused too many problems. But the crowd here, I mean, when you're that far back, you, you can't see climbs at the bottom of the wall if they fall off. So there's no good having them off at the bottom of the wall. So it's just about really just kind of taking some power out of the wrist, taking power out of the fingers, forearms, starting to get a bit of a full body workout, um, whilst creating really nice, just flowy moves and uh, not burning too much time, importantly. And that's another thing the route setters have to factor in at the bottom of the wall. Six minutes only on these routes. Yeah, but you can see they're just nice little floaty moves that uh, people always enjoy. Uh, time actually could be a factor for Seo. She's only just got onto the very steep section of the wall and uh, 
has used almost two minutes. I, I think she's okay for time, but it's probably a little bit more of a factor than it has been for some of the other climbers. I think the ability to rest on this route is potentially not playing too well into the climbers who are slightly more nervous. I think if you're a little bit more nervous, you will just start chalking and shaking, chalking and shaking a little bit more if you, than if you were maybe really brimming with confidence. You know, she, she's probably not that pumped, but she's just kind of really resting just because she's a slightly unaware of what's ahead and just kind of being quite precautious at this stage because the door really is open here for a win second world cup ever in the in the seniors she's fully capable of winning this i would be very impressed at anybody who said they really really uh, had her down as one of yanya garmbrit's biggest threats this year but she's really delivered she was not a flash in the pan she didn't just have a good weekend last week in Vila. she really is the real deal really struggled a little bit there just to choose between the methods went to go and get the left toe uh, into that donut the first one and then ultimately just dropped it out and had to campus it in the end so again a little bit kind of a little bit slow through that section that's where Luchka really struggled to stand on that lower foothold uh, half her time elapsed she's been quite a lot quicker through this uh, steeper section than she was through the lower section actually so if there was an issue with time I think she's probably dealt with it she's done that quite the hard way though this goes up again with the right hand rather than using the toe hook rollover and she did do well lower down to get that long quick draw that is the last one that she clipped off of one of the big donut holes so I think she'll take a pretty solid rest here with two minutes 30 or so to go interesting subtlety in lead climb it's not necessarily just about being able to do the move in bouldering you just give it beans and just get the move done uh, in lead efficiency counts it's about doing every move as well as you can you know, you're constantly calculating is this the point to rest where should i clip should i push now how far should i go now should i go slower now should i go fast now it's, it's fascinating two minutes of her time remaining it should be enough should be plenty of time really getting into the meat of this route now you can see that hold 35 jesse pilts by the way will be on the podium here in chamonix is in first place with only two climbers still to go including this one che hyun seo of south korea chooses to bump up with the right there with the left hand gets the left foot in place goes up to hold 35 and just misses it another fall on that 34 plus She'll go into second place. Four climbers on the same move at the moment. Slightly disappointing. Such a hard job for the routes, as we say it time and time again. But every time they go for it, you can see them. They load it up. They can see what they've got to do. And they try, like, just sort of almost practice the moves. Bump into it, bump into it. And then eventually go for it. And they just come short. As spectators watching on, it makes it, in a way, doubly frustrating that Jesse did try and correct on that because that might have been our best shot at seeing uh, the rest of the route. Although Natsuki Tani, the final climber out, might have something to say about that. Yeah, I would have to say Natsuki Tani is, in height wise, she is tiny. So it's going to be interesting to see what she does, but she has got this incredible lock off strength. Uh, you can see there uh, from Seo that she just actually overhit the hole slightly because it's such a fast move. Like I said, everything's really trying to push him off the wall. She, she seemed to go just over the top of the hold on the right-hand side. She just scuffed it a little bit on that move. So we've had, had a lot of climbers uh, falling on that move, but all falling slightly differently. Yeah, I just noticed there, Charlie, as well. We've just got the live scores up against. Jesse Pills has dropped down to a 34-plus. We, when we said we are not sure if she's secured that, I think there's probably been an appeal there. All the judges have gone back and had it, a look at it themselves. We'll try and find somebody to explain exactly what's happened there. Yeah, um, well, I, th I think we can uh, have a pretty good guess. That, yeah, she has been marked down. I thought she got it, you thought she hadn't, and uh, the judges initially agreed with me, but then realised that, as is usually the case, actually you were right. <laughs> well, she's gone from uh, second, potential second, yeah, she's not down, guaranteed down a place on the podium anymore. Yeah. She's down into third. Natsuki Tani could knock her off. And that puts Che Hyun Seo into first place. Well, we'll try and uh, get one of the judges or technical delegates, try and catch someone's eye, just double check uh, what the nature of the appeal was. We'll see. In the meantime, Natsuki Tani is underway. Uh, made the final last week in Vila. Did the double, you might remember, in Moscow. Lead uh, female youth B, lead and boulder. 
And when you think what a strong category is, that's uh, no mean feat. Youth World Championships this year in Arco. Uh, towards the, uh, the end of August, she will be in action there, I'm sure. I say, Arco, if you've never been there, that's a great opportunity to come to watch the uh, Youth World. It's a fantastic town, great venue, and usually very spectacular climbing on, on amazing walls. Ice cream's not bad either. No. Can be a little on the warm side at the, at the end of August. I'm slightly worried about two pale Englishmen like us. I got my ice packs <laughs> prepped already. <laughs> Got my handkerchief ready to put on my head. Uh, Natsuki Tani, just a slight mistake there, went up with the left hand to uh, what is essentially a foothold, and she really doesn't seem to like the look of these moves. Mike, we were talking a second ago about how the lower section of the route's really there to kind of tie the climbers out, take a bit out of the arms before the real meat of it, but a few route reading errors there low down. Yeah, but yeah. It's, I mean, 15 years old, it's definitely possible to make root reading errors, I think. It just staggers me, to be honest. But um, yeah, I think the root says will be a little bit surprised with this bottom section. It isn't a little bit harder. They were suggesting maybe we'll lose a couple of people lower down, but hasn't really panned out like that. Most, most of the athletes got quite high up on the wall. Suki Tani, now she's on to the uh, steeper section. Uh, used up more than two minutes of her time and quite a bit of energy, it would seem. Another little cut loose, tricky little foot sequence. We've seen a number of people from Molly onwards just struggle with this move. That's Suki Tani, just not sure what to do with her feet. She's got a bit of a pounce move to do. Like I said, she will try and go statically pretty much everywhere she can. She has lost the feet there and she falls off so low down and hands the win to Cheyenne Seal. Crazy at the bottom of the wall. There's so much talk about Natsuki Tani going through. It's 34 plus that wins it. Five climbers all there. 34 plus for Cheyenne Seal. Yi Yutong Jang, 34 plus. Jesse Pills, 34 plus. I Mori, 34 plus. And Ashima Shirayashi, 34 plus. Charlie, a crazy early fall there. Yeah, I, we were just talking about how the lower section is, uh, as I say, is, is kind of tie the climbers out and everybody else, it looked like that's what it was doing. Um, and uh, Natsuki Tani, yeah, made a couple of strange errors, just just never really looked comfortable on the route from, from pretty much setting off within a minute, just didn't look happy at all. It was the left foot there, we saw Jesse Pills jumping from that from a toe hook down low. Most climbers using the left foot that is available to them on the right hand side. But you could see all of a sudden she was just floating around on the feet, couldn't generate any power whatsoever off that smear. And uh, yeah, that was really interesting. It, we do see it on lead climbing. Some people set off and they just don't quite quite look right. I don't know if it's a psychological thing or nerves or what, but never never really seem to find any sort of rhythm. Um, just to let you know, by the way, I just had a quick word with uh, Graham Alderson, the IFSC technical delegate here. The IFSC officials uh, knew that there would be an issue with Jesse's score. It wasn't 100% clear, so they were proactive and decided to take a look themselves, and they decided internally uh, that it was a 34 plus and not a 35 uh, and therefore she got marked down now I would imagine there will be an appeal from the Austrian team to have it reinstated well, so don't be surprised if uh, we may have a slight delay and they might take a look at that but as it stands uh, Che Yun Seo comes second in her first World Cup and first in her second World Cup what a bizarre end to the competition it's all all of a sudden it was over uh, we were just trying to figure out what was going on with Jesse Pill's score then the competition had finished uh, I think Jessie's going to be bitterly disappointed that if she, if she feels like she's secured it, then yeah, 35 and she would have taken the win. Ultimately, with so many climbers falling off from 34 plus, slightly disappointing women's final there, I have to say, unfortunately. I actually really enjoyed it because of the scene here and the great moves lower down at the big Hollywood campus section. It was kind of a cool a cool move, but ultimately it led up to a move that these guys, they're all at such a similar level. We kind of got a feel for the root setters, really. 
and uh, handed the win to uh, Che Hoon Seo. Yeah, we, we, we talk about it a lot for the root setters. It's just micro calculations. Do we put this screw? Do we, do we put anything on the volume? Yeah, we'll put this one on. Should we put that one? No. Should we put a thumb catch? Should we put this? They've got so many decisions to make. They don't know who will be in the final when they set the roots. They don't know how tired they'll be, what the conditions will be. Will it be humid? Will the holds degrade? They, they don't, they, there's so much they don't know, and they have to make all these tiny calculations. And perhaps if they had their time again, they might have made that a slightly better hold, maybe turn it 10 degrees, maybe put a slightly bigger I screw mean it on. Could, could be anything, that's just the tiniest little foot dip for a right foot, just to give yourself a bit of propulsion through the right hand side of your body to get to that left hand hold, just something really minor. Could have been enough. So easy to speculate. It's just uh, such a tough, tough job. Yeah, I, I would never give the root setters a hard time because, as I say, when you start thinking about the variables, especially when, as I've just said, there's so many things they cannot know before the final. And uh, the amount of times they get it right is incredible. And if they just rotated one of the 42 holes, maybe 10 degrees, it could have transformed everything. But then, by the same token, if they rotated the hole 10 degrees, we might have had four tops. So. Um, Talk well, about a tough yeah, job. That's, that's, that's a really good description. You make a minor adjustment, you've gone from every, and five people falling on the same move to every, all of a sudden loads of people finding top two. It's very easy when we're sitting here to say, well, obviously that move was too hard, but as I say, they make it too easy. It's barely a move, and suddenly people are cruising to the top. So um, a very difficult job for the root setters. I felt slightly sorry for them as well, because also, as, as I was saying at the time, not everybody was falling in quite the same way. Um, D different methods of falling on the same move. Yeah, there were subtleties within that move, I think. It was it's quite an interesting kind of, it ended up being a, a kind of timing, almost coordination move a little bit. Just, yeah, big, big pounce up on the left. Just really had to sort of really load, load the cannons <laughs> before going up left. <laughs> load the cannons. I load my water pistols when I go climbing, but yeah. Um, would have been great to see a top, uh, especially because it was a really funky looking move, which we never got to see uh, heading up to that teardrop. But alas, we, we have a winner. I have to say, I'm not actually 100% who it is. We, we know it's one of two people. I'm pretty sure it's going to stay with uh, Che Hyun Seo. And uh, I'll go and grab a word with her now. So just before we wait for the interview, Charlie's actually slightly unsure who he's going to be interviewing, but we believe it's obviously uh, Che Hyun Seo as the results are live with 34 plus going back to count back for her to take the win in her second ever World Cup. Men's final will be following very shortly. Men's presentation followed by observation, followed by the final itself eight climbers through in the men's competition which we'll be seeing very shortly. Women's final ended up being pretty rapid in the end. Very quick finish to it. You can see the scene here in Chamonix all lit up perfectly with the mountains behind. Great scenes again in Chamonix. The organizers really do know how to put on a great show. women's show ended up being pretty short and sharp in the end if you have just joined us we are just waiting for the winners interview we are live here in the Place du Mont Blanc in Chamonix Mike Langley and Charlie Bosco here with you men's final still to come I imagine slight delay but we do actually have that interview for you now Congratulations, just your second World Cup ever, and you won in Chamonix. That must be amazing. Uh, I didn't think about this, and I'm really happy. Unbelievable. <laughs> and what was it like with the Chamonix crowd, so many people? Uh, I was very happy to climb here. <laughs> well, it was fantastic to watch, and uh, big congratulations. Only two World Cups. You've been on the podium and now you're a winner. Well done. Thank you.
great to hear from Jehu and Sehu, they're not easy. 15 years old, pretty steady away English, have to be fair. So that appeal, potential appeal, we don't actually know if an appeal has gone in by the Austrian team. We did speculate that it would be mad not to appeal on that unless it was really clean cut in the coaches' minds. Um, che Yun takes the win. Charlie, great, great to have you back. Another tough interview, but it's great to hear from Jay. And yeah, I know. I, I feel, I have to say, I really feel sorry for these climbers sometimes. I mean, uh, it's great for us to be able to get a live interview, but she's 15 years old. She's on the other side of the world. Uh, being asked to speak her second language, what obviously you guys at home can't see is there's a big light right in her face and a camera lens, which uh, is quite an intimidating thing to look at. So it's really nice uh, that she's able to give us a few words. Uh, I mean, we thought Yanni Garnbrett was a sensation. We've got another one on our hands. Oh, well, it's brilliant. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited yeah. about that going into uh, Branson next week. And I'm just looking across actually at the athletes area, uh, trying to trying to look at Yanya. It'd be interesting to see the look on her face. She's got some real competition this year. Anyway, uh, we're on with the men's final. Alex Megos will be first out, World Cup winner himself, and then Martin Stranick, Sean McCall, Jakob Schubert, Will Bosi, Kai Harada, Alberto Hines, Lopez, and Adam Ondra. That is quite the lineup. Two Czech climbers, and they're the only uh, nationality with two climbers into that men's final. Uh, Alex Megos will be first out, won last year in Briansom, where we're off to next week. I'm just keeping an eye on the scores, by the way, keeping an eye on the uh, IFSC officials. I think that is that. I think the win has very much officially been given to Seal. Uh, Jesse Piltz's score of 35 downgrades with 34 plus. It is Sia who wins for sure. So Alex Megos out onto the stage. First man to on-site, a 9A route outside. <laughs> Enjoying the applause of the crowd. Such a big character in climbing, Alex Megos. Uh, was on the podium here last year in Chamonix. Won the week after in Brianson. I think if you offered him that right now, he'd probably bite your hand off. Here's Martin Stranick, only just missed the final in Vilar. He was ninth there, he makes amends. Seventh in Chamonix, makes his way into the final. His compatriot, Adam Ondra, will climb last this evening. Here's a man that needs very little introduction. He's getting a big introduction from the venue MC here. Was a long time resident of France, speaks the language perfectly, feels very at home in this part of the world. It is Sean McCall. Well, multiple World Cup wins in Boulder and Lee, but it's over three years since the last of those wins. Could he find another one tonight? Another legend of the game will be out next. Already a World Cup winner this season in the bouldering. Jakob Schubert about to make his way onto the stage. Statistically now the most successful World Cup climber of all time, most wins. Would love to add his tally again. He is the reigning season champion from 2018. Here he comes. Well equipped with his binoculars and mic. They could come in handy. Yours did earlier. We spotted a few sneaky extra holds and dual texture holds that didn't look like dual texture holds. Yeah, I think if you're, if you're not wearing binoculars, this is a route that you're going to be wishing that you were. Uh, obviously, it's, it's tricky, it's getting dark. It's a long way from the ground to the top, and you, the better, the more money you spend on your binoculars, the better, I would say. And if, uh, yeah, if you finished observing the route, check it out, see if you can see anybody in Mont Blanc behind you. As Will Bosi, as I mentioned earlier, we saw him on his way to isolation. Looked absolutely ecstatic to be here. Look at that, you can't wipe the smile off his face. Cannot wait to get on the wall here. You kind of sense Will Bosey just bursting to get involved here. Here comes Kai Harada, the bouldering champion from Innsbruck in 2018. What a moment that was. Uh, you might also remember he had to then compete in the combined final the next day. He looked like he could uh, barely walk onto the stage, let alone climb. I'd imagine he's a little fresher here this evening in Chamonix after only one route this morning in the semi finals. Really interesting climber out next, just uh, 17 years old, Alberto Hines Lopez. He's already won a youth, a 
European League Cup and a European Youth A Boulder Cup this season. What can he do in the League World Cup final in maybe the most prestigious venue of them all? The world's greatest all-round climber, Adam Ondra, makes his way onto the stage and completes an extraordinary lineup, a stellar lineup here in Chamonix. It's a town where climbing is really the only show in town. They know their climbers, they know their climbing, and they know what a stacked field we've got this evening. Climbers getting straight on with it. Six minutes of uh, observation begins. And, uh, Alberto, uh, Sean McCall pops down, as does Kai Harada and Will Bosey. Always interesting to see what the climbers try and do, who they chat to. Uh, Alberto kind of doing his own thing. Trick, uh, difficult situation for him, 17 years old, first final. And uh, got the confidence just to back his own route reading judgment. Yeah, as we've seen uh, from the start of last week, Magos and Jakob Schubert working together, they, they really seem to be kind of feeding off each other a little bit. They're kind of going toe to toe. And it's great to see them both in the finals. Obviously, Magos in the finals last week, Jakob missing out. But uh, those two could be one of the big head to head battles here tonight. Certainly could be. Just whilst uh, the observations going there, I did uh, take the opportunity just uh, during the introduction there just to run off and ask the technical delegates about uh, Jesse Pills. Uh, obviously, you said uh, you got the information early early on that they 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 preempted a uh, a uh, an appeal appeal. Uh, they preempted the appeal. Uh, the Austrians did appeal anyway, and uh, they lost. Okay, well there we go. We can actually see Jesse Pills looking. Uh, pretty fed up with life she was close yeah to, to to lose a world cup based on an appeal whether you held a hold or not it's pretty brutal yeah it is after traveling to Chamonix climbing four routes spending hours warming up cooling down getting your nutrition right sleeping and it all, it all comes down to it uh, it was disappointing for us that she chose to correct because it would have been great to see have a good look at the top of the route but we talked about route setters making minor calculations, micro calculations, and climbers are doing the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she was probably thinking about the next section. You know, she knew that she didn't have the hold well enough. So the main thing was just to, to get it, but get it good. Maybe if she was in a completely desperate scenario, she could have just hit it, wrapped the fingers over, took the pain, and just tried to push on to the next move. That would have secured her the win. All easy. Well, and said and done in hindsight, unfortunately. Well, we're all World Cup winners on the ground, that's for sure. It was good to see the athletes challenged up to that hard move, I have to say. Last week, it was almost easy up to a stopper move. Whereas this week, they, at least they look a bit pumped up to that move. And maybe the, the, the route sets felt like that move wasn't a stopper. Um, they potentially would have hoped to see, obviously, a couple of the athletes getting through that section and challenging the teardrop section at the top. It was tears, unfortunately, all round for the route setters around hold 34 plus. Yeah, so the men, uh, we haven't had much of a chance to look at the uh, men's route. There it is. You can see they've got just over half their uh, observation time remaining. Uh, Mike, you were talking to Will Bosey. You mentioned this in the semi-final when he was on the co-commentary uh, last week. Uh, and he was saying he can remember about 95% of the route. Is, is he rain man or is that normal for World Cup climbers? Well, I think it's something that they, they train. It's not, it's not just about doing pull-ups and kind of get mega power endurance and, and working on all the climbing disciplines. Actually, remembering sequences is a huge skill within climbing. Even if you're just a recreational climber, you're trying to climb your 7A project outdoors. If every time you step on, you can't remember what you're doing, you're putting yourself at a massive disadvantage. And the guys at the top level, 95%, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of remembering. Uh, yeah, huge number of moves here in this competition. What would like to quiz him more about is that 95% of the is that like absolute detail could you could you tell me what hold 33 is what it looks like or is that 95% I know roughly where it goes and I think I've got to flip my feet here and grab that hold like this um, it'll be interesting to kind of delve a bit more into that uh, as, the, as the season goes on and and whether some climbers feel like it makes a big difference or not you can see there uh, Alex, uh, Adam Ondra and Martin Stranick closest to the camera uh, comparing notes, of course, compatriots sharing a first language. There is the scene in Chamonix. That is absolutely extraordinary. The uh, Glacier de Bosson tumbling behind in the background as well. 
Uh, there's the athletes area right underneath the wall, and there is the wall itself. The men will be climbing on the right. The uh, black and the yellow holds and volumes. We've already seen the women's route in action on the left. And I think that's uh, Jakob Schubert and uh, Alex Megos comparing notes. Will Bosi just doing his own thing. And uh, Martin and Adam still talking through it, move by move by move. Kairada off to uh, closest to us, left as you look at the wall. Got his binoculars out. Sean and Alberto back on the stage, having a closer look. Fifty moves then in the men's competition. Have just make a quick sprint down the front to uh, check the route topos. Was 42 moves in the women's competition, so slightly longer men's route. No shortage of tricks in the centre of the wall as well. Bit of a talk about upside down moves and feet first potentials. Let's we'll see if it develops. Yeah, there, uh, there is a route on the right, as I say. It's you I'm worried about, Mike. It's built for power, not for speed. Oh, look, that was hurdles. It was a pretty quick run, actually. Quite a lot of barriers in the way, to be honest. A bit of hurdles, actually, there. Like Forrest Gump just charging through them. <laughs> yeah, there was actually a bit of a blizzard of uh, coaches down the front there as well. I had to bat out of the way. Very politely, of course. I did wait my turn. All Austrian and waving a rule book or not? <laughs> I wouldn't like to say. Couldn't possibly comment. Got about uh, 10 seconds left of the observation. We'll have a closer look uh, at the route uh, as the climbers get on it. Few, uh, again, quite possibly quite showy moves. Uh, looks toppable if you can hang on for long enough, that's for sure. But it's a big if right now at this stage of the season. Martin Stranix nearly just wrecked himself going up the stairs there, sprinting back towards his gear. He'll be out of second, so he does potentially need to get a bit of a move on to get his stuff together. Seems to have got away with it though, bit of nervous energy. Yeah, Alex Megos will be first out. He actually, uh, during the semi final, looked like he had a much better performance. Qualified, I think it was second, uh, but it was marked down for uh, having used a bolt, stood on the bolt, and was deemed to have used it. it was marked down, ended up in uh, eighth place. If he'd ended up down in ninth, it might have been a little more controversial, but as it is, he ended up in eighth, still into the final. Uh, conditions absolutely superb on the wall here in Chamonix, so I don't think he could cl claim that. Uh, it, it's really affecting him either way, whether he climbs no, seventh or first. The only thing that's going to potentially have an effect is if it goes down to countback. We've seen countback already here in the women's competition. True. So, yeah, let's see if that makes a difference. We do hope not, of course. Not without its storylines, this competition already here in Chamonix and this lead season in general. There it is, Alex Megos will be uh, first out. Martin Stranix, Sean McCall, Jakob Schubert, Will Bosi, Kairada, Alberto Ginez Lopez, and Adam Ondra, the eight climbers to come this evening. Uh, darkness fallen here in Chamonix, came on quickly. Suddenly the peaks are silhouetted against what's left of the light in the night sky. It is an absolutely superb place to be. The temperature really dropping as well. Condition is probably improving by the minute. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be running off to switch out the board shorts for something a bit more sensible. <laughs> I'm fully geared up for the win here and fully geared up for what I really do hope will be an exciting men's final. See there, Charlie, the laser pens back out. That is actually the uh, local compares just explaining a, a few sections. Okay, there's people here, I mean, distance back there. It's, it's got a good few hundred metres away from the actual wall themselves, so they've got absolutely no chance. If we were using binoculars standing directly underneath the wall there, they're not going to be able to pick out the uh, dual texture screw-ons from back there, unfortunately. So it's nice that the local MCs are kind of just dishing out a bit of info about the route. Yeah, um, you had a good look at the, um, the the men's route earlier on. What can you tell us? 
Well, uh, in, in many ways, it's quite similar in its theme to the women's route. It's kind of quite bouncy and not, not, not too difficult, we imagine, at the start. This is only speculation of, and what we've been told from the route. So it's a bit of a dynamic move at the bottom, one potentially two, but not, not like all out crazy dinos or anything. And then uh, crimpy resistance climbing. Got this big selection of black wooden volumes on the side of the big red block you can see right in the center of the wall. Potentially a little inverted section there and then uh, nothing crazy at the top, but just keep on pushing and potentially a nice little move to finish. So Alex Megos, the first climber out. Remember the climbers coming in reverse order of how they qualified. Uh, Alex Megos making the theory that the strongest climbers come last look fairly ridiculous. First man to on size the 9A, World Cup winner last year in Briançon, and were it not for him, I'm sure inadvertently standing on a bolt, he would have been uh, much higher up in the rankings in the semi-final as well. So he's first out. If he puts in a very, very strong performance, that doesn't necessarily mean the route setters have undercooked the route. He's such a strong climber and he's really learning how to compete as well. Yeah, similarly to the women's competition, this field is wide open. Couldn't really predict this one at all. Not that we've had much luck with predicting in general. Uh, we do it for a bit of a fun. Um, but yeah, Magos, yeah, if he does well on this, I don't think the route setters will be panicking whatsoever, unless he breezes it to the top. It's been really enjoyable to watch the uh, evolution of Alex Magos from outdoor climber having a crack at competitions to uh, winning a World Cup last year in Briançon yeah. and now really looking the part. Yeah, nearly actually slipped there. He had a left heel around the corner of that uh, yellow... Oh, what are we going to call these, Charlie? These round things. Round... <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple of better words now. Uh, we'll stick with that, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a little, little wobble at the bottom wall. Would have loaded the arms pretty, pretty quickly and pretty urgently all of a sudden. Uh, a bit of a move here then, the first real show move of the competition. A couple of bad crimps and a bit of a move out into this black volume. Yeah, apart from that slip, he's looked pretty much in cruise control, Alex. Nice for him, I'd imagine, to get, a, get the moves in, uh, get a minute or two into the route, get a few moves under your belt, really relax try if you can to forget about the crowd looking on just concentrate on what you're doing on the wall had a good chat with Alex earlier on actually after the semi-finals he was on excellent form uh, takes his climbing very seriously but you wouldn't always know it when you chat to him yeah he's a great character and I think people really love having him on the scene regularly now uh, speaking of bolts there's one right in between his legs there. I'll have to be careful not to touch it Oh, and there's a wince from um, both of us there. That is a very difficult position to hang on to, kind of doing the splits whilst also spinning uh, your left leg sideways, dropping that knee inwards. Brutal position. Yeah, so he's actually managed to cheat the sequence a little bit there. Magos is looking pretty good here because there's a really tricky little undercut section that he's managed to completely avoid. There was talk of feet first to get into this position, but that box splits that he's just done has uh, managed to get him out of it. Uh, say when we were reading it from the ground we couldn't see a feet first sequence but it's uh, yeah, those are the experts Magos is all the way up now around hold 31 so he's used up very little time, Alex. He concedes, uh, still got more than half his time remaining. He's already uh, heading towards the final section of moves on this big red feature. That black dual texture hold that he's got his right hand on now, that's actually quite hard to spot from below, and it's actually very hard to spot that it's dual texture. I don't think he had a pair of binoculars with him low down, uh, during observation, Alex. Yeah, but it's, um, it's a really good hold. He was at hold quite a lot himself in route setting, and Alex Magos would have got a lot back there. Big, big rest before this next boulder section. Terrible left hand pinch. See how bad it is from there. And now he's really fighting. Alex has to go up dynamically with the right hand. And again, go up with the right hand dynamically. You can just see from the look on his face how hard he's having to work. Cuts loose, but does well to hang on to it calmly and quickly places that toe hook in place and gets himself composed again. Couple of moves where things looked in the balance there uh, for Alex Megos. He's such a strong climber out early. Two minutes 15 left on the clock for him. Choosing to chalk up, it's not really a rest, but if you can really push hard on that left foot and hook hard with the right toe, you can just get enough weight off that you know, I suppose you can get something on the arms. Yeah, the angle change has really worked in his favor there and he really does like toe hook, so that rest does actually look quite comfortable for him. And to fight quite hard through that midsection is that classic thing where 
be struggling, you have to put the power down, you have to climb really fast and just sprint to the next rest. Alex now gets that into an underclean, reaches up with the right hand. Crowd really getting behind him here. Root setters might be getting slightly nervous, but then you've got to remember that the first climber out is Alex Megos. He on site at 9 a.m. was the first person to ever do so, and then feet slip just as he tries to get on top of the black volume. And we said climbing means a lot to him. Just look at that reaction. He was going so well there, Alex. Looked like he was getting pumped. Looked like he managed to get some energy back, and then the feet just slipped trying to get on top of that black volume. Uh, Hairs on the back of your neck stuff there, Charlie. I was just watching it over our shoulder, live right behind us, as Megos fell off the absolute animalistic scream. And a <laughs> don't uh, yeah. think that needs too much interpretation as to what he thinks of that, unfortunately. A big, big fight for Megos, but uh, clearly pretty annoyed up there. Let's have another look. So let's, let's have a look. He got that clip done, so his work was done there. What, what went? Left foot, ah, oh, the right foot slipped as he went to place the left. Yeah, he was really just trying to tuck his feet really high there. Magos walks off the stage, a very unhappy man. We said the door was open here, and it certainly was for Magos, World Cup winner from Bianson last year. That could have been his moment in front of the biggest stage of them all in the lead season. Oh, the poor bloke being followed by the spotlight as he makes his way back to the athlete area. Um, yeah, Alex Megos visibly very hacked off. Uh, I can understand why. That uh, passion though, Charlie. Yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, I love it. But what, what I think is, is great about Alex is uh, he almost keeps that passion hidden and then sometimes he just can't help but show it. He'd like, you, he'd like to have you think that he's this sunglasses-wearing, chilled-out guy, but every now and then you, you get an insight into just how much this all means to him. Yeah, to me, that means he had to try on that route, and that's what we want to see. He had to dig into 9A Hornsite territory there. That's what we want. Uh, here's Martin Stranick. We've seen him down the years be more successful in bouldering. It feels like he's something of a veteran. He's actually only 28. Um, feels like he's been around for a long time. You can see just from the build of him, he looks like a boulderer, not short in the power stakes. I've actually um, heard Adam Ondra say, oh my, Martin is really strong, which is quite the compliment. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on on this route. In the Czech Republic, they have this mad campusing competition that Stranik and uh, Ondra always end up going toe to toe. It's just the most ridiculous event, the most ridiculous show of power. And, Stranic a lot of the times actually outdoes Andre, so that gives you an idea of how strong he actually is. <laughs> Just missed out on the final last week in Vila, Martin Stranic. Super unlucky, always feels slightly sorrier for the person who finishes ninth and the person who finishes tenth, you're so close to the final. Uh, he didn't quite manage it last week, he manages it this week, finished seventh in the semi-finals. Yeah, just had to dig in a little bit there just to find the good bit on that volume. Rupert says we're suggesting that maybe a little bit more dynamic to that black volume, but in the end, looks like the climbers can lock it. They've got the strength on those two crimps off of that dish on the right-hand side with the two little screw-ons added onto it. He had to pulled and then had to go a little bit more just to have a little search around for it. But you can see there he's actually got two really good hands and he's got a pretty decent foothold. So he's, uh, yeah, we'll get enough back there hopefully before pushing his next session. Just falters going up again. Really having to fight now, Martin Stranick. He's really steep, this section of the wall. Doesn't look quite as comfortable as Alex Megos does. But, uh, I mean, one theory I have heard from climbers is it, if you can be super powerful, it makes every move feel easier. And uh, Martin yeah. Stranick, as we said, not lacking the power department. Yeah, that's the problem is when the power tank's empty, you've got nothing, <laughs> <laughs> you've got nothing left in your armory. You also need the power endurance. So this is the section where we saw Magos get the box splits between that volume he's got his right heel on and the black volume out left. Let's see how Stranick has read it. Swings sure, the left yeah, side. I was going to say, surely nobody else has spotted that, have they? That's the undercut that Magos didn't even need. Looks like Stranick is kind of locking off on it, but it looks like a pretty decent hold. Now he goes feet first. Ah, oh, crowd love this. That's how he's read it. 
be interesting to see who he, who he read the moves with as well, because that might not be the first time, or the last, well, that is the first time, might not be the last time we've seen that move. Well, yeah, he was, he was with Adam most of the time, so will Adam try that? Uh, Adam's got pretty good flexibility. Will he combine that with the Megos splits a bit lower down? Just under half his time remaining for Martin Stranick. He's really battling here. He's looking so pumped in the left arm. A huge amount of effort went into that inverted section. He's still fighting somehow. And ends up falling off with the leg around the rope. Absolutely 100% effort for Martin Stranick. Look at that. Fantastic effort from him. He gave that route absolutely everything he had. Fantastic to see him in a, a lead final, having seen him down the years uh, so consistent in the bouldering. Let's have another look. This is just after the spin section where he's gone fully inverted, by which point, if you go through an invert like that, and it takes so much effort to bring your hands into your feet, it takes a huge amount of effort out of the body. Not only that, you've been upside down for a few seconds as well, which is never easy. Interesting to see if what sequences start to develop on that section of the wall. Sean McCall will be next out uh, in the very, very elite category of climbers who've won both World Cups in uh, two disciplines. Vilar 2016, the last of those wins. You might remember came incredibly close in uh, Chongqing, I think it was 2018. Only just denied another bouldering World Cup win. Has a big chance here in Chamonix. As I say, used to live uh, not too far from here, spend a lot of time in France. Kind of a second home to Sean. I have to uh, say, he's really coming out of here with like a, a next level focus I've not seen for him for a little while. Yeah, we, we, we were um, next to the, the, uh, the uh, Arve River here in Chamonix. Will Bosey walked past, happy to chat, psyched to be here. Uh, Sean. Uh, to be honest, I think a meteorite could have landed next to him as he walked to isolation. He wouldn't have noticed. He was absolutely in the zone, staring straight ahead, headphones on, yeah, looked late, focused. Later focus, and I think he, you know, to get a really good result here would mean a lot to him going towards the ranking points. We've seen the, the uh, qualifications coming up later on in the year for the Olympics. Ranking points are so important, so a big, a big result here would uh, do him no harm whatsoever. Not only that, he is the showman. That's uh, what he wants to put on a show. Yeah, was it Brianson, was it last year or the year before? Incredible move, and then uh, same in Cranj as well. Every time we get Sean McCall in the lead final, he seems to find something. Some mad move that he's swinging around on one arm with. I, mean to, I was mean to ask him actually what his World Cup tally is. It's a few years ago that he went to his 100th World Cup. Imagine he's closing in on, must be 150 now, really an extraordinary uh, longevity from Sean. I have to say that on that dishes that we can't, they're just out of shot behind this uh, big giant dish with the black volume attached to it. Those crimps on there must be really bad because they're, they're all trying quite hard. Sean's obviously read that as a uh, high risk jump. We've seen Stranick and uh, Magos just before him managing to lock it, but that's what we expect from Sean. Just go out there full confidence and just take the high risk maneuvers. He doesn't take any rest there whatsoever, that's pretty normal for Sean, just powering through. Kept a good, good pace as well, only 90 seconds a lap, so just looking over, he's oh, about a third of the way up the really steep section of the wall, uh, heading out towards the bottom of this huge red feature in the middle of the wall. Now we will begin. Uh, to move out left, he's not too far now from where we saw Alex Megos' uh, extraordinary splits and Sean just gets his sequence slightly wrong. Still manages a smile for the crowd, but I'm sure he's bitterly disappointed with that one. Be interesting to see it again. Didn't look as if he was especially tired, perhaps just misread it, went to correct an incorrect sequence and it cost him. I think he just had a, I think he had a, a massive fade out on the right arm all of a sudden. He was, he was on the undercut, looking pretty steady. As he went to the left-hand intermediate, all of a sudden he, s he was slapping. This is where he was doing the high-risk jump at the bottom. He read it as a bit of a jump. Level of power needed for that big rotation. He managed to kind of curb pretty quickly before floating back out right. This is the move then, crossed under with the right hand, went to tap with the left, hit it a bit, hit it a bit baggy, went up again with the left hand to a blocked edge. That was actually the correct sequence in the end, but just didn't seem to have it in the right arm. 
Artie Stranik just walked past us. I just signaled, squeezed my forearms as if to say, you pumped. He said, yep. <laughs> So uh, a disappointing result for Sean McCall, but back in the action in the finals. He's got another chance uh, in Briansson again next week. Ni nice for the climbers. Really, whether you're doing badly or whether you're doing well, if you're doing badly, you get another chance next week. If you're doing well, you can maintain the momentum. So I think the climbers enjoy having these back-to-back -back World Cups. Yeah, especially when we're in venues such as Villars, Chamonix and Briansson. It's definitely worse places to spend your time and your training time between events. Most climbers just moving to the local gym closest to the venue. Lots of climbers just got straight down here to Chamonix from Briansson, uh, from Villars, excuse me. Here is Jakob Schubert, 18 lead World Cup wins, three Boulder World Cup wins. Uh, statistically, that is the most of any climate in IFSC history. He is the reigning season champion from 2018. He missed the final last week in Vila and he can absolutely win here in Chamonix. He's underway. This is going to be super interesting because I think even Jakob himself would admit he's been slightly off his top point, I would say. Just been slightly off the boil through his climbing up to this point. And some of the roots are just saying, yeah, it's interesting. He doesn't seem to be quite there with his fitness just yet. But uh, I reckon <laughs> Jakob is one of those guys who can always drop a gear when he needs to. Well, I'm sure he would have told you as well. Um, he didn't feel on great bouldering form, and then he won in Munich. So never get bet against Jakob Schubert. I remember in Munich, he was absolutely he was ecstatic to make the final. Could barely believe he made the final, and then he went on and won the thing. So anytime Jakob Schubert's on the wall, I basically refuse to bet against him. Um, about a week after the Vale World Cup, which he didn't take part in, I went to the Austrian National Championships in Innsbruck, uh, um, and he looked absolutely mighty, Jakob. Really good close-up of what the climbers are actually against it. They've got one good dual texture edge that's usually used as a foothold and then a really bad slopey crimp. So you can see why Sean ended up jumping for it. It's a terrible hold. So where Sean McCall, obviously he jumped to that volume which meant his feet were way above where Jakob now has them. So Jakob just takes the opportunity to take on chalk, get a bit of a breather before this next section. Here goes Jakob. That was where we saw the spectacular jump uh, from Sean. Just let you know that quick draw in the foreground. That's actually in the, on the women's route. If you're wondering if uh, Jakob's missed a clip, he hasn't. That, that quick draw on the left of your screen now is, is part of the women's route. That's the next one for Jakob. Bosh is up to that dish. Uh, so this next move looks incredibly powerful. Yeah, this is where we lost Sean, so got to get this sequence right. He'll know as well, just from time and, and the noise of the crowd, and perhaps, uh, I couldn't hear what the venue MC said, but perhaps he gave a bit away as well, that Sean fell pretty low down. Yeah, uh, controls that intermediate quite nicely in comparison to Sean there. Sean just struggled to use that quite kind of in control, but Jakob gets the feet across pretty well. What sequence will Jakob use here? Goes for the invert. Reigning overall champion from the World Cups last year, reigning lead world champion, leading combined world champion. Jakob Schubert, a legend of the game on the wall here in Chamonix, loves the big occasion and he's climbing really well here. The pump surely kicking in, but there's no real big signs of it from uh, Jakob. The elbows aren't out, it doesn't look like he's puffing too hard. I have to say, if you want a lesson in route reading, that was it from Jakob Schubert. The way that he got into that invert, he just pounced his feet straight up, spun it round and was instantly into the handhold. Very little fuss. We saw Magos just struggling a little bit upside down. Uh, not Magos, sorry, Stranik was the, uh, the first climber to use that sequence, but Jakob Schubert had it absolutely dialed. A great bit of route setting, a great bit of route reading and climbing from Jakob Schubert. And now, because he's in such a good hold, he's going to take a big opportunity to rest this out. Yeah, he's got uh, just over two minutes remaining. Uh, I think he probably needs to get moving before too long, just time-wise. Uh, I wonder if he's looking down at the clock and he's kind of got a time in mind, or will he just wait until it feels like time to go? Yeah, sometimes in these positions, your one arm may be feeling a lot worse than the other. So I think he'll take the opportunity just to try and figure out how he's feeling. But time is really running down here. Quest's off now, though. 
Now he launches into the upper section. This is where it gets really burly. We saw this from Alex Megos. You go from kind of having something resembling a rest to having a real battle on your hands. Shoots out right. The volume above, the big black volume, is where we lost Alex Megos just as he was trying to get his feet on top. Jakob Schubert looks like he's got something left in the tank, but you can tell he's having to begin to work hard now. He's breathing quite hard, chalky up a little bit more. The elbows are slightly out, pump beginning to kick in, but he's still going. It's Jakob Schubert, of course he's still going. Get the clip, there's only two more, and then he's at the top. He's got just under a minute remaining. Time is now really a factor. Uh, it goes up with the left hand. Needs to get the feet sorted out before he then goes up with the right. Could he be heading for a new high point? It's looking pretty promising for Jakob Schubert. Goes up and just misses it. Desperate, desperate fight against the pump there from Jakob Schubert. So many times we've seen him with Jakob, he always seems to get completely empty and then still manages to string together 10 or 15 more moves. Not this time though from Jakob, a really good, good hard route here for the men's competition. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Uh, as I say, Alex Megos pretty much cruised, but as with Jakob, got to those moves where you're exiting the big red feature, suddenly it just looks like it goes into a different universe of difficulty. Yeah, you do this mad crossover, this terrible little pinch for your left hand, and from that point onwards, you're, again, it's side pulls with bad feet, cutting the feet across, and a big, big burn there from Jakob, that was cool. This is where, it, where he went, he was really dug into those two crimps, the right foot seems to be giving him not too much, just came short, that is a kind of a, uh, it's known as a boomerang in the, in the trade, dual texture on both ends, just comes up short on it, slid down it, but a good fight from Yakov. Yeah, let's just uh, double check, I think uh, that, I think Alex uh, had the hold above, so that will be Yakov in second, we'll just wait, uh, it feels like a while since Alex Magos climbed actually, uh, yeah there we can see it. he did have the hold above, so uh, the hold that Jakob was going for, Alex had solid, and that was when the feet slipped. So Alex does stay in the first place. Jakob Schubert goes into second, 43 plus Martin Stranek and Sean McCall, the, foot, the uh, other climbers we've had so far. Uh, you have to love watching Jakob Schubert climb. He's very much a he won't die wondering climber. I mean, oh, I love it. Yeah. Short, uh, Jakob never comes down and thinks, oh, I probably could have given that a bit more. Well, we were saying at the start, it, uh, Jakob and Alex Magos really seem to have kind of like buddied up in these competitions the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, the difference between them was actually fascinating to watch. And Magos was really snappy, really quick, great flexibility at the bottom of the wall and just really quick fight. Whereas uh, with Jakob, you see this just, just do or die attitude. And you know, we can certainly, most climbers at home can take away something from Jakob Schubert. Immaculate route reading and a massive fight. This is Magos where he went. That's the hold in the right hand where Jakob Schubert just fell off. Have another look as to what went wrong here. It was the right foot, yeah, you were yeah, right it was. The right foot just pinged. He was trying to place the left foot and then the foot he was standing on gave way, but uh, this was where we lost Martin Stranick. Uh, Alex Magos just behind us, just take his, his harness off at last. I think he was nervously watching Jakob Schubert. Uh, this was Sean, I think, with a spectacular jump. Again, barely pauses to look at it and launches straight into it. The way that his body stopped rotating there, it, it, my first initial reaction was, oh, he's tangled in the rope. But it was, it was so snappy the way that he just managed to helicopter his feet back round, and that was it there, just a bit of fade out on the right arm. Yeah, quite a, an unusual looking fall, really, just kind of lowered onto the arm rather than falling on it. Uh, this was Jakob. Uh, I think he probably could have done with being a little bit higher on that hold. Yeah, really sort of side pulled, slopey pinch hold, and he just looked desperately tired at that point. You can see the two crimps that he was on before. Just he was, his elbows were going higher and higher. It was only a matter of time before he fell off, unfortunately. Uh, a very disappointed looking Sean McCall, sadly. Uh, but yeah, great to watch. Uh, Jakob Schubert has not had anything like the normal lead preparation he'd have because he did so many Boulder World Cups. Normally he'd have been preparing for the lead season long before and I think uh, he, he's quite happy to his, admit his endurance isn't quite where he'd like it to be at this stage of the season. But uh, I think with the World Championships looming and of course the Olympics looming and the potential to qualify for the Olympics, the climbers, climbers are, are looking at a, a bit more of a long game than they normally would. So Jakob I'm sure will find form at just the right time, he generally seems to. So Will Bosey now into the Chamonix final for the second time said 
what an incredible experience it was to climb in the final last year. He gets another chance in 2019. Always a pleasure to watch Will climbing. Really likes to get the crowd involved. I gave him a bit of a bit of stick. I was suggesting it wasn't. That it's not, not very Scottish behaviour to go and turn and pump the crowd up. Uh, but yeah, he really likes to get the crowd involved. He's, he's always always adds to the show. Really hope that Will doesn't just take this as a moment in his career and actually tries hard to win here. I think he's got an opportunity. Obviously, some mega names still to come, but Will Bosey, he's got a podium in him for sure. I, I think it's a really good point you make, Mike. It's, uh, we were, I enjoyed chatting to him and I enjoyed how much he was looking forward to the final, but I suppose you, at some stage you've got to get the game face on and say, yeah, I'm really happy to be here, try and enjoy every second. Yeah. But the best way to enjoy it is to give your best performance. I think he's got to realise that he is good enough to, yeah. to make a World Cup podium. He's not here just to make up the numbers in finals. Making finals is one thing, but he's done that before. Now it's time to, to, to really get on with this and, and see what he can do. Yeah, it had a disappointed bouldering season. It felt like every time I chatted to him at the World Cup, it was always disappointment. Oh, if I'd got this, if I'd done that, misread that. So there's, there's been a big result coming for a long time, Will Bose. He's very much a combined athlete as well. Got his eyes on the Olympics, firmly on the Olympics. Um, but really seems to churn out the best results, I think you'd say, in the lead. Yeah, British record holder in speed. So he's uh, yeah, no slouch in all three disciplines. And, uh, going steady so far, Will, sometimes we see him really powering, motoring through these bottom sections a bit faster, but he just seems to have slowed it up and just steadied away a little bit. So it gives you a bit of an idea of how hard these moves actually are. So this is where we lost Sean McCall. Yeah, it's a process of actually unweighting the right heel hook that seems to be giving a few of the guys a little bit of an issue. It is a tricky move that you've, you've got. It's a reasonable undercling by the standards of World Cup finals are going for, but you've got to be accurate. You've got to get your timing right. Yeah, it's quite a strange move after that, actually. You can see him just dabbing the little undercut move. We saw Jakob Schubert really using it. Will Bosey just powering straight through it and hand, ma hand stacking on that. Doesn't use the. Uh, looking, <laughs> I think he might be looking for the crowd. It might, that might have been the moment for Will Bosey. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't use the feet first method at all, just went straight up and then hopefully we'll milk this rest a little bit. Yeah, because those it's those triangular volumes over on the right-hand side of the big, the huge red, again, don't want to call it a, a volume, the feature. Uh, it's those black triangular volumes on the far right-hand side of that. That's where it really seems to get brutal. We saw both Alex Megos and Jakob Schubert. Uh, I think the venue MC might have said something to Will there and he was listening. Um, that's where it really seems to get brutal. So he, well advised to take a rest. I, I tell you one more thing that's very impressive, Mike, is how accurately the climbers read the route. He clearly knows it's about to get hard. Yeah, only exactly. from observation, having never tried it. Exactly, take the rest moment, but then go absolutely all out on this next section. Gets through that really terrible pinch section, and now he's into the into the really power phase of the route. Slaps up with the right hand. You have to say, he's probably made that section look the easiest of anyone who's been on it so far, Will Bosey. This is brilliant stuff from him. I don't think you'll bother getting the crowd pumped up now. Just concentrate on the climbing. Suddenly looks pumped, stabs out to the left, and we lose him. But he certainly made that section look as easy as anyone. And then it suddenly just seemed to kick in almost a couple of moves later than everyone else. But when it kicked in, it really kicked in. Yeah, we'll have another look. Just as he jumped to that big boomerang on the left-hand side, it's not as in-cut as you might like. Hit that as his right hand hit it, his little finger dropped off, and that's a pure sign that your forearm is completely flamed all of a sudden. And then when he went to that next section, you've got to be really accurate on those kind of block screw ons just to follow. Yeah, another case of zero pump to 100% pump in this move. Let's have another look. So yeah, but it seems to just come in one move as he jumped for this big propeller with the legs. We've seen that from all of the guys who got to that stage. And he bumps down the left hand to bring the right in. And as he brings the right hand in, you can see he hits it pretty bad. He's actually legs really bent there on the toe catch, which is not helping. Little finger drops off there. That's a pure sign that your elbows are up and you're getting really pumped, at which point there was no coming back. That's really, that was good observation in real time, Mike, to spot that. Yeah, and uh, the first thought is to acknowledge the crowd. I, you have to love some, love watching someone who loves competing that much. Brilliant yeah. stuff from Will Bosey. I think that'll put him into a, a pretty solid third as it stands. Uh, three climbers still to go, so by no means guaranteed a place on the podium. Kai Harada, the world bouldering champion, is next out. Here he comes. Only Japanese climber on the men's side in this final. Two on the women's side.
take his time. Uh, we had a few pretty amazing uh, moments with Kairada last year. You might remember in Moscow in the Youth World Championship, could, should have won uh, the Youth World Championship, and he was, uh, to say he was heartbroken, is barely to, to do it justice. And then a month later, goes and wins the Senior World Championship. So he had a pretty extraordinary uh, three or four weeks there between Moscow and Innsbruck. Yeah, it was certainly a way to make a name for yourself. And people won't forget the name Kai Harada for quite a few years to come. You wouldn't have thought he was so talented in bouldering and in the lead, but certainly in the speed as well. No slouch on there. No. Uh, again, which, uh, which two men will Japan take to the Olympics next year? Uh, if you want to go as a Japanese climber, you're going to have to be better than Kai Harada, and that is quite a big ask. Yeah, Tomo and Narasaki not making it really anywhere this weekend after surely basically should have won last week. Just foot slipped on the uh, yeah, on the rope right at the top of the walls, the last climber out. Didn't even get Tomo into the semis here in Chamonix. Kai looking for a bit of a high risk jump there. Yeah, didn't look entirely convinced by that move. I thought for a second he might have missed it as well. Yeah, it's a good edge, luckily, that he managed to control it. Up to a very bad edge. So this is where we saw Sean go for the very dramatic jump. Yeah, Kai, potentially a very similar height or slightly taller than Sean, but it looks like he might have to pop for it as well. Bit of a nervy moment here for Kai. Oh, gets it nicely done. Just uh, asks his right shoulder the question for a second time. Says, come on, let's go. Just pushes it out. Choosing to take something of a rest here. It's a rest for the arms, not really for the hamstrings. Swings back on, oh, attempts to swing back on. Uh, thought he might live to regret going out for the rest there if he couldn't get back. Now he's heading up uh, through these series of crimps and then he'll be up to the another, another round volume and then out left where we saw the Megos splits as we're going to call it. Uh, Will Bosi walks past us, looks pretty happy with that third place as it stands right now. You might actually be able to hear Will Bosi enthusiastically uh, telling Graham Allison what happened on the wall. Meanwhile, it's all about Kai Harada. Feet cut loose, and there's ain't much there for the feet. He's got a tiny little one for the left foot, but you can see the left leg just quivering to hold him in place. Kai just oh, really struggling to match. Kai, we've seen people go from not pumped to extremely pumped very quickly, but not that low down. Oh, that's bitterly disappointing for Kai. His feet were all over the place as soon as he got into that sort of big dish volume. He had to try a little bit hard, took him two kind of attempts to get over there. And once he got into that rest, he, his feet were just all over the place from that point onwards. It's all well and good getting into these rests, but getting out of them sometimes is, is more effort than actually you gain back from being in the rest. Let's have another look. It was on that big slope, but that's a, I mean, it's a terrible hold by all accounts, but to, uh, to lose your feet there as well, just bouncing around there, just slight adjustments. And yeah, it was pretty disappointing there for Kai. That is a shame for him, only Japanese climber in the final, big chance for a big result. Not today, he will be in sixth place, yeah, two climbers still to go. Two climbers still to come, Magos is already on the podium here. Yep, pick up another medal there. He was hit on the uh, podium here last year, Alex Magos. Uh, that was where he learned the hard lesson that you have to have a pair of shoes to be on an IFSC podium, and he only had flip-flops. <laughs> what, what a rule. <laughs> yeah, no, I have to say, I wasn't aware of that one. Strange that, isn't it? <laughs> Alberto Ginez Lopez uh, comes out now. Already won Youth A Boulder and lead European Cups this year. Very promising young Spanish climber. A country that is not short of outdoor rock climbing. What can he do in the final here in Chamonix? This is his first final. Being his first final, we really hope that he can climb the way that he showed in the semi-finals. He really showed fluidity, power, grace, route reading ability, endurance, everything. As you can see coming out second last, he had, had it all. But let's see if, if he can really put the nerves to one side and uh, put on a good show here. First tricky little lock-off move. Big rollover off this right-hand side pull. Jill Texture side pull with his right hand there. Big rollover. 
to one of these big dishes. So I think the lesson we've learned from Kai Harada, of course, Alberto didn't see him, is don't hang around too much. Don't try and milk too many rests, because you can't think, Kai probably didn't need a rest when he came out left and then had to go back. You don't really need a rest. You've only done, what, a dozen moves or so at that stage? Yeah, he just couldn't find his flow at all. Like I say, he probably wasn't even pumped. Just rested because it was there, I guess. And the, yeah, the, ta the tactics going this final. This is a really tricky move, it turns out. Will Bosey actually made that move look quite easy. He's renowned for crimping really well on the smaller edges. But uh, yeah, the, the top of those two, and he's just come short again. Big moment here. Sorts it out on the second time. Seen a couple of athletes now having to take a couple of attempts at it. Let's see what he does. Goes for the similar sort of heels up rest as with uh, Kai Harada. I've just seen in the background Alex Magos prepping his shoes and his jazzy socks as we saw from him before. Ready for the podium. Which position it will be though? Yeah, he's learned his lesson from last year, that's for sure. Uh, Alberto looks like he's got a fight in his hands already here. Needs to somehow try and get rid of a bit of the early pump that he's got. Looked absolutely mighty on the semi-final route. Uh, get the clip done. Crowd being asked to give him a bit of support, and they do so. This next hold is where we lost Kai Harada. Uh, he's lost his feet. Alberto looking like he's really struggling as well. This is like Kai Harada's attempt all over again. Super solid with the right hand as it lands. Now the left. Needs to somehow regain a little bit of composure if he can. Yeah, he needs to get something back here. He's so close to falling off there. What level of endurance does he have, though? This is going to really suck it out of his arms on this next undercut section with the right hand. Looks like he's managed just to get a little bit of something back. Can he get through this next section and start to fight into the middle of the wall? And now the feet cut loose again. He somehow hung on to that. Incredible stuff from him. Feet repeatedly cutting off. This is like Yutong Jang on the uh, the women's route. Yeah, feet coming off and still stays on. Drops into the Magos splits. What a level of endurance this guy has. He looked like he was off five or six moves ago. Yeah, well, he looked like he was off pretty much from the, the change of angle, but he's managed to keep on fighting. Goes up with the right hand. Every move looked like it's absolutely heart in the mouth, and he needs to get those feet engaged. You can't hang on to a position like that for very long. Bumps up again. <laughs> this is incredible stuff from Alberto Hines Lopez. Got four arms of steel. Every single move up now, no way he's off. He's off, he's off, and he's still going. This is I feel like I've been watching him fall off for the last 45 seconds, so and yet he appears to still be on the wall. Incredible stuff. Needs to get that quick draw clip. The last thing you need is to be worrying about going back for that. Yeah, I think he's so pumped right now, he can't even imagine clipping that. He can't imagine taking a, whole, a hand off long enough to actually stretch to that draw. He did quickly check there to see if there was a knee bar as well, but the root setters have measured it perfectly. Seemingly no knee bar, knee bar available in that rest, and he's still looking so boxed right now. Yeah, you've got to try and free that right hand up long enough and then do a pretty tricky move by getting that clip done. He's only got uh, less than two minutes remaining. This is a fantastic fight from Alberto Hima. Lopez just disappearing behind that volume. Be good to get back to that angle we had a second ago. Now he's getting into the section. Believe it or not, that looks even more pumpy. You can see the teeth gritted. Goes out to the right and finally falls. He obviously went to the Jakob Schubert School of Competing, which is until my forearms are about to burst out of the skin, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed watching that. Absolutely brilliant battle. So good to see climbers tested at this level. It was a matter of power endurance, and every single move he just seemed to be off and somehow kept fighting. Uh, he will be struggling to pick up his coffee and croissant tomorrow morning in the hotel reception. That was an absolutely immense attempt from Alberto Hines Lopez. And uh, that is not the last time we're going to hear that name at the top end of uh, IFSC World Cups, that is for sure. Yeah, he should have been off way before this section. Yeah, exactly. By this stage, we thought he was living on borrowed time, and he got about another 10 moves. It was fantastic. <laughs> so steep there. Look at this jump. How on earth he held that? Quite a staggering bicep there, I have to say, on the left arm as well. At this stage, I think he, he knew... He was on borrowed time.
Adam Ondra makes his way onto the stage. Greatest all-round rock climber in the history of the sport. Comes out into perhaps the most famous IFSC venue of them all. The last climber out, we haven't seen the top yet. Can he give us a fairy tale ending? Could it be Paris 2016 all over again where the route hadn't been topped? He was the last climber of the whole week of action and he delivered the ending we were looking for. Can he do it again? He looked absolutely superb uh, in the semi-finals, fully back to strength. Missed Vilar, it would seem as a precaution now after a slight uh, wrist injury, which you might have seen if you follow his YouTube series. Uh, didn't seem to hold him back at all in the qualifiers or the semi-finals. And uh, I have to say, from what I've seen this weekend, he's my favourite to win this one. This is almost like moments of the bouldering se season over again. Adam Andre, last climber out to try and win the competition. Pressure is immense here. He must have a pretty good idea uh, for what's required here, you'd have thought, Adam. I'm pretty sure he'll know a top will do the job. He knows he's got to put in a massive yeah, fight. It's an interesting, slightly different sequence there at the bottom. Didn't really like that right hand lower volume, ended up matching where his left foot is now, but very quickly through here. This is where Adam Andre, that, that style that he has of just really sprinting through hard sequences is really going to work for him, I think. It's a route that's got very powerful hard moves, but it's interspersed with some relatively okay rests. And that is an Adam Andre supporter, about five metres from our country booth. He won't be talking much tomorrow, I don't think. No, I know. It's, uh, got Alberto's uh, approach to shouting, clearly just give it everything. So much passion on display here tonight, all the way from Magus as the first climber out. Electrifying men's final. Yeah, it's been an absolutely gripping men's final and Adam Andre is now uh, four and a half minutes away from concluding it. How will it conclude? Adam, he looks like he's having to work here. He's certainly not cruising these moves. I'm judging that by the look on his face. He's still going pretty well, but a few grimaces. Yeah, this section seems quite tricky on the feet, actually. This is where we saw Kai actually drop. He's really struggled to uh, find something to put the power down through the left foot. I think if we're going to see anyone do the mega splits, it's surely uh, Adam Andre. He's got good flexibility. He's tall. He'll certainly have the span to reach it, but will he even spotted it? I don't think he has, because... Uh, yeah, there we see, he's done it, he's got it the traditional way. Drops into that right-hand undercut, what sequence does he use? He uses the Jakob Schubert method and then goes inverted. <laughs> and chalks up midway through as well for extra style points. We were speculating uh, how he would use that method because Martin Stranick, also from the Czech Republic, uses that same method. Adam Andres has got to flip that right hand around. Oh, it looks so relaxed for a moment there. I thought he might just have a, have to have a really quick flip round, but in the end, really crimps down on that left hand that he was on the little yellow screw on just to the side there and just rests it out then. The tension really building here into the head wall. What an absolutely magnificent moment. Just over three minutes remaining. The Place du Mont Blanc absolutely packed. If anything, he's got more full as this finals progress. We've got the greatest climber of all time on the wall ahead of us. And it's all to play for. Adam Andre taking a long rest here. He's, he's earned that rest, so he's climbed so quickly. Getting himself set again, Mike. So impressive that the climbers were able to read from below that this was a section they'd need some energy for, and they're choosing to take rests beforehand. Adam really launching into the key section now getting out to those two black triangles out on the end of the, the right hand end of the red feature gets the right hand now he's looking very solid here Adam you can see the yellow hole right at the top of your screen there that's where Alex Megos fell if Adam Ondra can latch that hole he'll win the competition on count back it'd be great to see him top the route though still he pauses he's got plenty of time left just had a little foot slip, maybe a little heart in the mouth moment. That red feature, just where he's got his left foot, there's a little metal bar on each edge of that. And it uh, just means it's not quite as secure for the feet as it could be. This men's final coming down to the wire. The last climber out, Adam Andre, the crowd give up a big cheer. He hasn't acknowledged them at all. Every now and then we do see him bring the crowd into it, but this time he's just staying focused, trying to get the best rest he possibly can. Crosses through. Adam launching up now, gets a heel hook in place just for extra security, gets a clip done, there's only one more and then it's the last clip of the route. He won't know it, but if he can latch this next hold, that is it for Adam Ondra. 
shaken out again. He's climbed this route so intelligently, taking his rest when they've been available. And there it is, huge cheer from the crowd. Adam Ondra is going to win here in Chamonix. Could he give us the perfect finish? It gets absolutely desperate on the head wall. Tiny little crimps again, he chooses to shake out. Needs to get the left foot up if at all possible. There's that tiny little scrawn to aim for. Again, Adam chalks up and takes something of a rest. He's going to get the clip done nice and early. One minute, 20 left. Now he has the crowd for a bit of support. Just over a minute left here in Chamonix to what's been a fantastic men's final. Could Adam Ondra top the route? He's got plenty of time. Has he got plenty of energy? Has he read it right? He has not. But he's done more than enough to win here. He gave the crowd what they wanted. He wins a lead World Cup for the first time this season, having already won a Boulder World Cup this season. He is the greatest climber of all time, and he's picked up another World Cup win in the Place du Mont Blanc. Mike, what a performance. Oh, epic, Charlie. That is what we came here to see. After a slightly disappointing women's competition, the men's competition has been absolutely brilliant. The Root Setters have nailed this one. That was Scene's 2016 World Championships. Once again, Adam Andre, last climber out to win. He even had a moment to fist bump the crowd towards in the headwall. The deepest drop knee I've ever seen. And the big grit of the teeth just before he fell off. But Adam Andre, what a show. Absolutely fantastic. Kurt. The crowd all on their feet now. I have to say, Charlie, as well, all of the athletes jumped out of their chairs who have been in the finals. They wanted to see what Andra could do as well. They came here to compete, but they can appreciate the talent on show when they see it. Oh, and he just managed to get his knot undone. Uh, looking forward to interviewing Adam Andra. He, uh, he can't help but hide his emotion. I'll be chatting to him in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, amazing stuff. I thought he was going to top the route and then... We, I feel like we've said it about just about everyone this week, but went from not that pump to absolutely boxed in a couple of seconds. Um, great to see three of the greatest climbers of all time. What a podium that is. Well, you have to say, Charlie, looking at that podium, this has been a real root climbers competition. There's no sort of like uh, ringers from the bouldering scene really in there. Obviously, you've got bouldering winners there, but you would say traditionally that is three very, very good rock climbers indoors and out. Uh, on the lead who have got it on the podium and a great great show yeah I would have loved to see a top but as I say Adam he hit those crimps on the head wall just as he pulled off the hold that he got to win the competition he suddenly moved on to the crimps suddenly looked absolutely boxed and uh, Graham Alderson our technical delegate assures us there are no appeals on this occasion <laughs> few uh, after, the 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 weekend. Yeah, after the confusion of the semi-finals and the finals it's uh, felt like everything we've said had an asterisk next to it uh, but Adam Ondra has won the men's competition, uh, winning two disciplines for him already this season. 2019 go pretty swimmingly from his point of view. Didn't quite find a top, but he found the 47th hold and almost the 48th. Adam Ondra wins ahead of Alex Megos uh, and Jakob Schubert. Will Bosa, you said it, Mike, looks like he's capable of a podium and he came pretty close to claiming it here today. Alberto Hines Lopez, an absolute warrior on the wall today. It takes a very well-earned fifth. Martin Stranit, good battle from him. Sean McCall, a frustrating seventh. And Kai Harada, just never quite got going on the wall. And uh, eighth place for him. Mike, I'm off for a word with uh, a very happy-looking Adam Ondra. I think this could be one of the more enjoyable interviews of the weekend. Yeah, I have to say, just as Charlie runs off, he's just been rugby tackled away from a whole bunch of fans who are asking for autographs. That is the life of Adam Ondra these days. He can't move anywhere without being swamped by photographers, fans. And it was actually a couple of the uh, local helpers who are actually jumping in to get him to sign their T-shirt. Great to see such heroes of our sport on the stage, in the spotlight, and putting on great shows. Very shortly, we will be bringing you that interview with Adam. You can see there, right at the top of the wall, that's where he was, just a couple of moves shy. I have to say, what a drop knee at the top there. He was bridging out on that right-hand volume, actually adjusted it, put his foot up really high to begin with, then had to just twist it, dropped it down. Big, big, big drop knee fully inverted the knee before trying to stretch over, desperate stretch over his right hand to the top of that. Teardrop Chamonix volume on the right hand side and it was just a couple of moves for him to go. But at that point in the competition he had already got it in the bag and he knew it. What a great show. Big moments actually all the way from the beginning. First climber out, Alex Magos ends up in second position when he came off. It almost felt like he could have done more. He was bitterly disappointed and certainly didn't hide the fact that he was so. 
And Jakob Schubert with just a plus behind him, 43 plus. That is the men's podium. And we can hear from the Widom, Adam Ondra, right now. You could have expected. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't expect that I would win and actually that I would feel so strong and, and, and fit. Just, just talk us through that head wall. It looked absolutely desperate. Like on the last two chips, I was quite recovered and then all of a sudden it turned really heinous. The last three holes, I was like really just going on the very limit. And the very last hole that I touched was like, it felt like nothing. Maybe the root setters after the maybe not so successful root setting of Villar having more tops, they really wanted to make sure that nobody tops today. <laughs> And the crowd are right behind you. I've been told there's 12,000 people in here. That must have really fired you up. Do you, do you enjoy that, the huge crowd and the noise? Wow, it's, it's amazing. I think normally outdoors I enjoy just climbing by myself or with a couple of friends. But when I climb out there on the competitions, I really want to hear the crowd. And sometimes like in this finals I was starting and somehow I just had the feeling it's going to be awesome. I just somehow had this inner feeling that it's going to work out perfectly and I felt just great all the way from the bottom to the top of the route. Yeah, absolutely amazing performance. Congratulations. And I take it we'll see you next week in Briançon. I'm skipping Briançon to get ready for the Hachiochi the World Championships season. All right, well, we'll see you then. The massive congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Adam Ondra actually raising a really good point there, just saying that the Rousset seemed pretty determined that we didn't see four or more tops here in Chamonix. We certainly didn't do that. They've done a great job in the men's final. And uh, Adam Andre just reflecting on what has been a spectacular evening here. The crowd really sticking around for this presentation. We will be bringing you the podiums very shortly, so do not go anywhere just yet. It's great to see Adam Andre. Really interesting point that uh, Charlie was asking him there, difference between sort of indoor and outdoor. He's saying outdoors, he just loves to be on his own in the nature, just climbing hard. And when he comes to the competition scene, he enjoys the challenge and enjoys competing in front of what has been an absolutely tremendous Chamonix crowd once again. This Nick World Cup very rarely disappoints. Absolutely brilliant evening here. We do hope you've enjoyed it at home. So do not go anywhere. Charlie Bosco will be running back to the commentary box very, very shortly to conclude our work for the evening. And here he comes, Charlie. So good to hear from Andre and, and a number of really interesting points. Uh, yeah, really interesting. Uh, just before we start recording the interview, obviously this, it's, it's not an exact process. You have a little bit of time to chat. And uh, Adam is saying, oh my God, that, that last hold I got to was barely a hold. I nearly crimped the edge of the volume. Uh, he said it was absolutely dire. He, he, um, I really don't feel uh, he fluffed the move or he misread it or anything. He, he got it right and it was just an absolutely diabolical hole. But yeah, really interesting to hear. Um, I had actually forgotten he was skipping Brianson. Apologies for that. But uh, we will see him in action in Hachiyoji. But yeah, absolutely delighted. He was yeah bouncing around. Really good. What I found, find really interesting, uh, Andre has come in and out of the competition scene. Sometimes he's in love with it. Sometimes he loves the challenge of dropping back into it. Um, but the climbers get to be challenged to a massive level with these competitions. They they get to climb as if it's one of the hardest routes they're possibly trying to on-site outdoors. And I think that's an element of the competitions they actually really enjoy, being, having their level really tested. OK, well, that's all from myself and Mike this week. Uh, a lot of climbing coming up for you in the next week. Tuesday and Wednesday, we've got the Paraclimbing World Championships live from Briançon and then uh, Briançon again for the next round of the Lead World Cups. Promises to be absolutely spectacular, although if it's any better than Chamonix, my word, we're in for a treat. But Mike, thank you very much for your company and uh, I'll see you in sunny Briançon. Yeah, it's been thoroughly enjoyable and uh, yeah, see you soon. Yeah, thanks for watching and uh, do stay with us. We'll be live streaming the podiums, but that's all from us and we'll see you in Briançon.
FFC Lead World Cup 2019, representing Czech Republic. Medaille d'or et vainqueur de la Coupe du Monde de Difficulté, Chamonix 2019, représentant la République Tchèque, Adam Ondra Thank you. 